Welcome to this week's episode of the Have A Weird Podcast, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Adam Rowe, and that's Dan, aren't you? Yeah, I am. Dan Nightingale. <laughs> this is our podcast. It is. We're both going on tour separately, uh, starting in... You start in August, I start in September. Going all over the gaff. Tickets for my tour at adamrowe.co.uk, and tickets for Dan's tour at... DanNightingale.com. Uh, ahead of that, you've got some previews coming up, danspreviews.com. Yeah, very few tickets left but tickets are selling out for both these tours. Get them now to avoid disappointment. And of course, if you're a long-time listener of Have A Weird, you will know that we have got one of the biggest and best Patreons on the planet and the biggest in the United Kingdom. 23,000 and counting, starting from just three quid a month, you get an absolute belter of a deal from us. Not only do you get early access to these public episodes, but you get an extra episode every single week, which is where we save our naughtiest humor for. And on top of that, every single month, you get a special. You get a brand new special every single month. Back catalogue included. Legendary. The Nashville special was huge. We went to Amsterdam. We've done two ghost hunts. We've taken over a restaurant. And there's loads more on top of that. I think we're up to something like 20 plus Patreon specials. And then the famous lock-ins when we get hammered in here with our mates. Some of the best podcasting we've ever done. Patreon.com slash have a weird pod. Sign up for just three quid a month. You do get more benefits the more you sign up for, but everyone gets all of the content that we put on there. And on top of that, you get early access to tickets for our shows, for the podcast live shows. And sometimes we do small events and they sell out immediately on Patreon. So if you want to be in the room for those, you've got to be a Patreon. Patreon.com slash have a weird pod. Sign up now and enjoy this episode. We've already recorded it. It's going to be it's a belter. 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 Wag wag leads. You're listening to the funniest podcast in the game from the heart of Liverpool with Adam, Dan, Sensei Kal, and Finn. This is the one and only Have a Word. Brought to you by Manscaped, the very best product on the market for below the waist grooming. Go, Ed. Get on me. Podcast. Have a Pod- word, the podcast. Podcast. Um, no, Dan Nightingale, Carl Riegler, yeah, Finley, yeah, yeah. Us, Will on the cameras, yeah, Matthew yeah, in the yeah. corner, stay in the corner, Harry on the couch for now. Whoa, Rob Rouse the- joining us later today. Stay in the corner. <laughs> That's yeah. stay in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> is he in the corner? Is he just watching the dogs? He's out with dog edge. <laughs> stay is valuable to this company in so many ways. <laughs> There's so many but people behind the camera. Dog sitter has become one of his most important roles. I wonder if people know there's like a 12-man team here. I don't think they do. Let's no. not tell them. All there is. Yeah. It's 12. Quiet, mate. I think it's about 12, yeah, including like Jack. There's eight and... in here right now. And then Steve's out there. Jack Finnegan's not here at the minute. Martin's part of the team. Josh. That's 11. I suppose. I, I, it's a 10, 12-man team. Not just a podcast, guys. We're a company now. We're Good around. start, this. <laughs> just doing some happening. And we're looking for a dog sitter because <laughs> Steve is meant to be a business manager. So if you'd like to sit in your house and watch two dogs hump, we're paying decent and rates. Ideally, just for <laughs> like gender ratio, it would ideally need to be a woman. And we're going to ask you for your graphic design skills <laughs> as part of the interview. Tw- uh, you know, it's £12 an hour. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Doing it's it's like, £45 pound an hour. It is. 45, oh, That's yeah. what everyone's on. <laughs> yeah, but you get extra for dogs here. I say, hum, hum, hum. How are you, Dan? A lot. Great. Yeah. Great. I'm really good. How are you? I'm fantastic. You've I'm had a bit of owie surgery, but yeah. you've fucking braved it, haven't you? I'm all right. Carl's had seven teeth removed. Yeah. But he's, seven. But he's on £55 an hour, so he Se- don't give a fuck he I've turns up. I've had teeth gone. Uh, you haven't changed my oh voice. Oh my God, yeah. You can only change your voice. You'd forgotten how to <laughs> form sentences. Well, you know. <laughs> no, I had a, 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 the beginning of an implant put in yesterday. So I'm a bit sore. Um, <laughs> he's getting implants. <laughs> New pair of tits. 2023, he can do what he wants. Do you reckon there's ever been a man who's got uh, breast implants but not become transgender? He's just like, no, I'm a man, but I just wanted a pair of tits. Because like, I like playing with tits, so why wouldn't I just have my own? Yeah, there is. Who's there? There is. Why People is used to do that for porn, didn't they? People, that was a fetish in porn. No, I don't want it to be. I'm not talking about Excuse fetish. Me? I'm just talking about like John from The Office. No, but yeah, I'm saying down that was a fetish in porn. I know a lot of porn. I've seen <laughs> quite a bit. I know you've never seen. Uh, Bloat with tits. No, well, I, I heard like, this, I heard this on a, a comedy podcast 
years ago Shame them probably. talking about it, um, about how there would be men that to get more work in the porn industry would no, have tits. You, you're misunderstanding Colin the question. Colin down the pub. I, John from the office just yeah. sat, just turns up one day, he's got new tits. Everyone's like, John, have you got tits? And he's like, I like tits. I've, I'm single. I wanted some tits to play with. I got myself some tits. Yeah. So you not for work, s- just for pleasure. No, you yeah. need to be able to say, have you seen John's new tits? It's not like yeah. John the porn star. It's just John. Like just because he wants a pair of tits. Not like for any career gain. Just. So what, what am I Googling? Big tits. <laughs> Madden. As a fella called John, got himself tits <laughs> just to play with and not gained any monetary value for them. John from John. the office. <laughs> and no one's allowed to ask him about it because of HR. Johnny Sins, big tip porn came up. <laughs> it did. Yeah, it's just a lot of Johnny Sins. I reckon there's many who've gone, I oh, just gives a, gives a big pair of bastards there. I think there's definitely many who've got the ass implant. Carl. Yeah. I don't know, this is a fucking natural. No, moment. people want to be Carl. That's the thing, isn't it? I, yeah. I'm tempted. If I got surgery, it would be a BBL. A Brazilian bum lift. What? We've said I've this got, I haven't got an ass, have I? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a bum hole. Fucking but I haven't got an ass. Spinning top. <laughs> I've got that Mike Wazowski bum, haven't I? Yeah, you really have. They're going out of fashion, though, aren't they? Asses. People are getting them removed, the Bums. BBLs. <laughs> no, the big, the big bum. Like, the- Kim Kardashian's had some of hers dissolved and stuff like that. Those the big stupid. asses came into fashion with, I think, Kardashians were probably the... How do you dissolve someone's bum hole? Because it's an implant. Oh, I see. It's not the bum hole. I think. Yeah. We recently just laid it away with the fat, fat they've put in your bum. No. Hole. So it's going out of fashion and now the... now petite, kind of slimmer. No. In my, in my <laughs> been, all these years, people have laughed at me because of my ass. And I'm about to be the hottest guy on the block. Who's laughed at you? Yeah, of but ass? you're only <laughs> you're only petite from the belt line. That's the For thing. For now. You've got, I'm oh, in right, boot okay. camp right now, mate. Right. No, it can't be the, the end of the... No, I like a bum, but like era. this, like fucking like shelf ass does me head in. I love it, me. Nah, it looks stupid. It's the same, the, like the filler and stuff's decreasing, isn't it? Yeah. Like you're seeing it less. In Liverpool? Not in Liverpool. Okay. Go, just the rest it, of the world. Just, women, you're all beautiful as you are. Come on. And, 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 and what? <laughs> <laughs> no, technically. <laughs> that ain't true. Some of them got their Mike Wazowski faces. You know what I mean? <laughs> fucking hell, girl, you got a big eye. I I think I, if you I, if you but whatever you're born with, that's what you're rocking, isn't it? Are you saying the the age of the Jay-Z over here. putting like shit into your badonk yeah. to make it extra badonky? Yeah, yeah, I could, I could, yeah, yeah. The age of going to Turkey for a a big booty. Turkey tush. Turkey just do everything, don't they? Yeah, they fucking do. I want longer legs. I'll come to Turkey. We'll give you turkey legs. You can. I know you're f- six foot seven. You can, you can get, get longer you legs. Can, you can get longer legs now. Do you do things to your knees? Yeah. It's not your knees. <coughs> no. It's, it's your also, shins, isn't it? No. It's your shins. They break your shins. And then they they put like um things to join but, the break. So they but essentially, is, they, like they, they break your shin. And then instead of letting them heal... They put something in the middle so that when it heals, oh, they're yeah. longer. Oh, no. Seems legit. I'm, I'm tempted. I've always wanted to play basketball. How, how much do you want? Another foot? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Adam comes in six foot six. A <laughs> fuck? Oh, oh, five, six. Oh. Five, six, seven. Five, six. I'm five, nine, mate. Five, eleven on Tinder. <laughs> Adam comes in six, eleven. <laughs> you like Adam? Yeah, lad. I'm six foot three on Tinder and black. It's a, yeah, a secret account. Um, yeah, yeah that'd be great I'd go, fun. I'd if go you, six inches. No, you wouldn't. Where? On six, your legs? You'd lose your yeah. balance. But you've already you've just said you've got thin legs and no arms. You don't want them six inches longer, do you? I, I do. You're going to be a threat to yourself, mate. Why? Just a, a bit of a breeze. You'll be over. <laughs> oh, Adam's fallen. <laughs> You'd be like a Peroni glass. <laughs> <laughs> they famously topple easy. They're top heavy Peroni glass. They're just like no. I've listen. I've been in places where they said Peroni, famous topplers. Yeah, <laughs> fact. Bad analogy. <laughs> it's not. Listen, Simple comment below pleasure. if you ever dropped a Peroni. I'm more like a Stella thing, like just thin there and a then chalice. Yeah. No Peroni. Peroni is like pretty consistent all the way up. I no, mean, topple, I'm not that. The real topplers. Simple pleasure getting a Peroni and having it not topple. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um. Yeah, you yeah. can't. You would fall over a lot. I wouldn't. I'd be six three, and all your jeans wouldn't fit. They'd all be three quarters. <laughs> I'd just buy new jeans, Carl. 
He's probably that's, a, that's not the major problem there, is it? Carl, oh, he's I'm probably he's sixteen now, but none of his jeans fit. He can't get his jeans anywhere. I just gonna buy new jeans. Are they he's long he's probably or short already ones? got the jeans, mate. That's <laughs> yeah. how much of a shopaholic he is. Yeah, these are the jeans for now, and these are the uh, for when I'm six foot three. I've already got bought them. Probably get a few rid of a few. You know, I'm on a clothes long. ban until I've lost two stone. Right. That, uh, is that one of your? Okay. Is that one of your seven? What? Is that one of your seven? No clothes. Or have you just banned? <laughs> we've got, we've got to uh, let people know that we're not talking about the uh, dwarves here. Like I've got seven rules for life at the moment. No clothes. <laughs> just a bollock old dwarf. <laughs> that was a Patreon episode. So I, I'm following a seven week, seven rules <laughs> thing. Yeah, to celebrate seven, seven. It was oh. he, it affected him so much. Seven, seven. Can you name? Can you give them all dwarf names then? Boozy, booze. No, non boozy, innit? Oh, non boozy. Sober. Yeah, I'm sober for seven. Boozy, weeks. swipey. No, one of them's called sober. One of them's called no clothes. <laughs> no, but they're like the seven deadly sins, aren't they? So it's what you're not doing. Oh yeah. So I reckon boozy and swipey are good. Yeah, what swipey. Are the other ones, golfy. No. I thought you were doing exercise, exercise which was the golf. Yeah, but that, that makes it sound like I'm not playing golf. No, that's sweaty. Sweaty. sweaty yeah it's not sweaty. playing boozy golf, swipey yeah. sweaty i Inter think i've broke my thumb by the way intermittent <laughs> whingy <laughs> hang on I'm health update health oh, update yeah. and now it's time for adam's health I've got seven update. rules i'm not drinking i'm dieting and there's five others skinny yeah um but you're not shopping now until you're uh until you're a size eight i just want to lose uh to get two stone off and we'll take it from there. I want you, you to mean? lose it as well. I'm currently 100.4 kilograms, which is fair. What? Why are we doing kgs? Do it old school. He's What's... fighting, isn't he? He's getting to his <laughs> fighting weight. 100 kg? You want me to... 88 is fighting weight. Fucking European over there. What's 100... What's that? I'm going to calculate 15, it About 15 stizzles. 15.8 stone. So not 15 stone 8, but 15.8 stone. So you're about 15.10. Yeah. And you want to be 14. No, I eventually I want to be 12 and a half. <laughs> what? Whoa, 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 let's not laugh. No. I saw Johnny right. Bongo the other day, by the way. Dan, what were you when you were lowest? On cocaine, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> That's what I was. I Being was too patient. I got down to 10 and a half stone and my head looked too big for my body. Like I'm, I honestly, I think there's a what you can do and then there's a what you should do. If you want to lose weight, it's not about like, I've been too low and now I'm way back the up. The upper limit of the ideal weight for someone my height is 12 and a half stone. <laughs> Stop laughing at him, let him do it. <laughs> Johnny Bongo's lost right, four okay, stone. Cool. I'm four. sorry, Carl. Yeah, we'll, we'll just change the culture of this podcast from day one. <laughs> and I'll be like, Adam, good for you. And I'll support you on your journey. Shut up, you big fanny. We Are you still on the fucking page? journey. <laughs> What? We supported your anti lemo journey. That like you're yeah. fucked. <laughs> Listen, I'm. F you, yeah, I'm a bit with jam, all jam. of this, with all of this, he knows he's got our support. But there has to be, there has to be some yeah, sort of. Yeah, please over that, son. Oh, under right. the under the rug. Um, you got on you, Adam. Twelve and a half stone. That's me target. Good. By the end of August. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm just adapting to the new have a word. You be whoever you want to be, babe. Never forget where you're coming from. I think, like, so I'm 15 8 now. I think by the end of August, I can be four, just over 14 stone. I reckon I can lose stone and a half in six weeks. The water weight will fall off quick anyway. You lose yeah. about six pounds, Yeah, you're that? very watery. I am. <laughs> like a fucking... Go on. Very, very water. I've said it. But a I hot water bottle. But I, oh, I would never make jokes about someone's weight, Carl. Not in the new have a word. <laughs> <laughs> I think you pissed that water weight, mate. Yeah. I lost 1.7 kilograms yesterday, which is about four pounds. Three shits. Yeah, but I poo every day, don't I? Oh, yeah, yeah. Three bigger shits? No. Right. I don't. Th I think when I start eating a bit better, me, my stomach weirdly gets like more regular and mm. easier to deal with. You, you, I think it's not water weight; it's Guinness weight, isn't it? Essentially, you probably, stop drinking yeah. Guinness and you drop one. Your body will go, kg. "Oh, cool, but we're gonna drop quick now," and then it'll slow down, won't it? Yeah, but I think by the end of August, I could be fourteen-ish stone. I believe in you, and so do I. <laughs> I'm because playing golf every day do. in August, oh, yeah, apart yeah, from yeah. Mondays. I'll right. be here. No, no car. You just walk it, obviously, for the yeah. for the cal cals. Yeah, 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 yeah. unless I'm tired. <laughs> no, Have you had an play. electric car? Yeah. 
Can you bunk one of them on the bow ring? <laughs> <laughs> they, they don't actually have them at bow ring. No. No. But uh, Alan, Alan, they have them in uh, the couple of the others that have played. But I, I don't always get them. I like the walk. You need it. It's being at one with nature and the sunlight, you know what I mean? Yeah, nature. That's, yeah, <laughs> nature, golf course. That wild, wild terrain. <laughs> <laughs> That's fenced Fucking off. Water, and... sand, trees. You have got yeah, all yeah, the yeah. Uh, the biomes. What? You've got all the biomes. A biome is a type of like floor. Cool. <laughs> That's the biome chat. <laughs> Clip that bad boy. <laughs> what do you mean biomes? So they've got sand, they've got water, they've got like a desert, uh, a forest, uh, a city. They're all biomes. Sorry. Right. I'd be stupid. You got all the things there, lad. Water, sand, <laughs> grass. Yeah. That's why you pay for the bowing now. You don't bunk on, mate. Eighteen pounds to see all the biomes. <laughs> got fucking loads of biomes. It's a pound at all, which is flying, isn't it? Bowing's a very easy course. There's not many biomes there. Just a few bunkers. Can you so, it's all biome, very please? open and straight. Bowing. And a prison. The <laughs> other biome. <laughs> sand, water, prison. The yard. The yard. <laughs> Fences. I played bowing on my own the other day. Solo golf? Mm -hmm. yeah. What's up? Seven biomes. There are seven biomes. Rainforest. Yeah, there's forest. a rainforest about and park, of course. <laughs> Desert. You have to avoid it. Tundra. That's how it bounds on the left. That's a rainforest. They've got a glacier. It's just, you've given me that. Come on. Shut mm, up, I Finn. think it's offside, but, you know. Seven we'll, we'll biomes. Move. Good for you, mate, and I hope it goes well. Support you. Totally. Can I take the piss yet? A little bit? No? Yeah, of course. I just, I'm just saying, let's not laugh instantly when he says I want to lose weight. That's a very toxic, especially the listeners, very toxic way to be, Dan. 14 stone by the end of August and 12 and a half by the end of the Mate, year. Mate, get you off the fucking painkillers you're on. <laughs> I don't know. I've just had uh, uh, surgery on me face and now I just want everyone to be nice to each other. <laughs> I'm suffering. What I discovered yesterday or over the past few days, salad's quite nice. It's a lovely day for it. Oh, great day for it. I've had three salads in the past two days. With dressing on? No. Really? Really? Dry salad? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Is that, I feel like you're, maybe we're similar in this. Do you go through phases of food and having the same food over and over? Or do you always change it up? No, not really. I do go through, like, sometimes, like, every day for a week, I'll have a T-bone steak. But, like, <laughs> That's what I mean. Yeah. But mine's, <laughs> you're mine's not T-bone steak. <laughs> That's my favourite salad, the one that's next to a T-bone steak. Yeah. <laughs> i tell you what, uh, salad's nice, because it's mainly cheese. What's the one where it's buffalo? Cheese salad. Like mozzarella. Cheese salad. <laughs> uh, toma tomato, is it caprese? A caprese. There's loads of them in Italy. Yeah. They're my favourite salad, because it's 50% cheese. Oh, yeah. Great salad. Chopped tomato. Cheese. I made a salad for me and Alfie yesterday. Made a spicy chicken. Chili and garlic, spicy chicken, uh, padron peppers, Dan, there's a button. tomatoes, oh, yeah. lettuce, olives. Ah, you can cook. Bit of spicy rice. What Alfie said. Oh, nice. Spicy rice? Mm. Oh, this salad's getting way more fun. <laughs> chicken, spicy rice, few chips in there, <laughs> melted cheese. You've got to have some sort of carb, and it was better than having chips. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put, it, put the salad in, <laughs> in bread. What are we We're having? going to Nando's for lunch. Are we, what are we having? No, we can't. Why? Not with the dog. We can, it's just special anxiety, dog. <laughs> oh, yeah. Go to Wagamama's. Uh, you started dieting a few weeks ago. You said you and Laura were starting, but you don't seem to have lost any weight. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you, Adam. <laughs> um, I was doing all right, and then we went on holiday. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know if you know, boozing every day doesn't help loads. No. Um, I've got my uh, space food, and I'm, use I'm like trying to eat that. But then we went to Dublin and then we went to, and then we got boozed on Monday. But uh, that's where it all goes wrong as soon as I booze. Are like, you happy then? In the aftermath. You are you happy? In life. You're just, are you content right now? No. Oh, start getting on this alien food then? No, I could just do to lose a bit of a uh, bit of tummy. How, how much do you want to lose? Uh, it's seven stone. <laughs> yeah. What would that take you I'm about 13.9 now. You want to be on death's door? Yeah, yeah. Am I a full suit, two stone heavier than you? Yeah. Mad. You wouldn't think it's look at us. Because <laughs> Adam's, you know, slimmer than he looks. 
the hair. Or not as slim as you look. It's hair, yeah. It's hair. It weighs a lot. That's a good thing, actually, yeah. ego. You are, ego. you're your most, like, aerodynamic. aerodynamic. You, yeah. like, you're perfect. If you was a weigh in, you're boxed. I could do too. You know, 12 and a half stone is about my sort of, like, I look slimmer, but I'm healthy sort of thing. Having seen what 10 and a half stone looks like, it wasn't good. No, I remember seeing you. You looked awful. But I didn't also didn't have any muscle on, so I just went like thin because I wasn't doing any w working out. Are you pumping iron now? Yeah, <laughs> pumping <laughs> loads of iron, mate. Just come back from a pump. <laughs> what are you, what are you pu pumping? What am I pumping? Yeah, <sighs> loads of things. Mainly iron. Mainly iron. Little bit, of, you know. What ones you do? Oh, the pushy ones. Yeah. I'd loads of different directions. What they like, was? Get away. What they was away. it today? What? What day was it today? Tuesday. <laughs> They're all pump days, it's mate. Wednesday done. It's <laughs> <laughs> that's how much I've pumped. I've lost the calendar. <laughs> so I've lost where I am in the week. Cause when I go hard on a pump. It was a chest day. Chest? Yeah. Other people's chests. I was pumping them away from me. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Lydia that works on the fucking reception. She was like, oh my God, look at my tits. I was like, get away, Lydia. Lydia? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. A rogue, aren't you know a lady with big tits, don't you? <laughs> no, I just didn't want to do Linda. I feel like he does John and I do Linda too much. When Lydia, <laughs> the fuck away, chest day. What? Um, <laughs> legs, I've got them. So I, sometimes I do a leg day. What you do? Yeah, I walk in with my legs. Yeah, have a sit down. You know, use my legs to lower myself into a jacuzzi. Oh, stand up with my legs. That's leg day. Gone. Lydia comes over, kick her in the head. Leg day. Wow. Oh, it's interesting. I, uh, I'm not pumping any iron. Swinging iron. And the drivers and me putter. <laughs> golf done. Ah, oh, golfer. <laughs> yeah, I thought you were going into the gym and swinging iron. It's frowned upon, you know. It's a new workout. <laughs> <laughs> He's killed Lydia. <laughs> No, I can't do weights. I'd like to, though. You can have seen you, and you weren't that bad, even though you were taking the piss in a pink leotard oh, yeah. or unitard. Yeah, my mate Rummy goes, uh, does workouts every day. And I was He's like, a big lad. Yeah, I was like, I've got a mate who could just, you know, when you're, everyone's like, oh, you need a personal trainer. I could just go and hang out with my mate, and he could tell me what to do. So that's it. You do stuff to do it, though. You can't just go and hang out with him. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Watch. You want to know my workout plan? I hang out with him. He tells me what to do, but don't do it. It still works. How many tickets were sold for the CCC? That looks heavy. I've seen Dave Longley do proper. He actually spent an afternoon with me, tried to, what is it called? Deadlifting. I've never seen anything fucking scarier. He's a big boy, him. Yeah, he's six foot fucking four. He's all muscle. It's some unbelievable watching someone do that proper like. I never know what the point of that is. That's not transferable in any way unless you're like lifting a car off someone's leg. And often does that happen? <laughs> He's not doing it. He's not doing it to be more helpful in road assistance situations. <laughs> I think he's doing it for core strength rather than being like, yeah, you know what, what the AA are yeah. unreliable. Why does you want to be that strong? Why does you need to be able to lift that? What's the point? What's the point? Be able to lift six Tesco bags. That's all you need. Like <laughs> literally, and they take it so seriously. Do you know what I thought I had yesterday? I, you know, when I see someone take something seriously that I think is silly, I worry about everything I take seriously. Like I say, comedy and footy seriously. And I think I must look stupid when I do to the majority of people. Have you seen that video of the um, the fellow who bowls a strike and he starts kicking off? It's the title of Vittorio's uh, Edinburgh who show this year. you are, I am. I, I, he's going, yeah, I did it, yeah. Who do you think you are? I am. And he, <laughs> That's exactly it. He looks fucking insane, but to him, that is the most important thing. Like all year he's been like, that one strike on that one day is all I need. And he looks stupid. So when I come off stage, I'm like, oh, that went well tonight. Does everyone else think, ah, soft cunt. I mean, <laughs> when I celebrate Mo Salah scoring a penalty to make it 4-0, like it's the birth of me child. Like, so it's everyone who's not into footy going, you're an idiot. Yeah. Wait. Especially for Wait, wait, wait. I don't know when you're having a kid, but <laughs> please be videoing you celebrating, like, <laughs> Mohamed Salah scoring a Champions League goal. Like, it, as he comes out. Well, like it's uh, unexpected. Yes! <laughs> Fucking yes! <laughs> Alfie's there. 
this is why we did it. I'm feeling love. <laughs> Yeah. It's great that you've got things that you give a shit about. And even though temping bowling is not something I give a shit about, you you want to have stuff in your life that you give that much of a fuck about. Yeah. And you might look like a silly twat while you're doing but it. But what you care But about? who cares? Outside of comedy, what do you care about that much? Um, I, I love how much I, I'm into the NFL. And then there's, there's, obviously you've got a family. So those little victories. When we were away in Tenerife at breakfast, can I, sorry uh, to interrupt you. Can I ask you a question? Do you celebrate the Saints scoring a touchdown the way I celebrate Liverpool goals? Uh, no, no. It's a different thing. Like I get so much from watching the NFL, but I've seen you and Liverpool is literally your whole life, one team. You couldn't give a fuck about the national team, really. I watched that World Cup and I watched you be like, oh yeah, they're doing all right. You couldn't <laughs> give a shit. You you and Liverpool, and that's like most, so I've picked the Saints, I like them, but I've not got the same sort of regional, long-standing connection. I haven't got mates that are into the Saints. I love the NFL, I get so much from it. But every season, amazing games, like when the Bengals and Chiefs are playing, I, I and when we went to watch the Super Bowl, I get so much from that, it's fucking great. And then my kids, obviously, when Etta, Etta won two of her three uh, races at Sports Day, and I wasn't there because we were in Tenerife, which is not the end of the world. I would have liked to be, but whatever. And uh, she won the egg and spoon race and like the, the the race where you have to do like obstacles. You have to like throw three bean bags into a thing and then run back and then collect something. So and she fucking nailed. That's the, her, her, I, I actually stood up in the, I, I was so elated. I fucking loved it. I was so happy and Will was so hungover that he nearly cried. That was such a you know lovely what we moment. Do next time, Etter has a sports day. We go. We should go and treat it like we're like the away end. Chanting. Flares. Flares and... Can we, are we allowed to go? Oh. Take a banner. I, yeah, shit. I don't know how they'd stop you, you know. They wouldn't stop us. I'd tell them to fuck off. I think, I think after you'd started doing the Poznan, I think people would start asking questions. No, they get involved. When you turn up as the Etter Ultras, that would be fucking brilliant. Would she be scared? <laughs> no, no she's, that's not. She'd be like, it's Adam Rowe and daddy's friends. <laughs> My kid is so like me when I was young. She's like, loads of people like me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I can see it in her. She's like, new people. Let me show you things. Like She doesn't get like, who are they? She'd be like, oh, finally, the recognition I deserve. <laughs> 12 lads. Oh, in, we've got to do that. Yeah. Oh my God, it would be amazing. But don't you feel the same about your pressure washer? You what? Don't you feel the same about your pressure? Like if your pressure washer has a good day, I feel like you're just as happy. Uh, uh, have you ever used a pressure washer? It, a lot of how it works is down to me. No, like I, I don't like just like, fucking hell, it's going <laughs> and I can't stop it. Look how clean everything is. I've let go. I'm a wizard. <laughs> like it. No, I feel like you love your pressure washer as much as your children. Oh, I love getting into it in the ha with the house. Yeah. Don't do it now. When the council <laughs> <laughs> When the council left two fucking recycling the bins, the wall, actually, Lord, I'll put it back on. Quality. Don't worry about it. When they what? The council left two recycling bins that I don't know who they thought that was for. And they just left them on the street and I nicked them. I was happy about that for about a week. It's quality. We've now got two recycling bins for absolutely no reason. Go fuck yourself, everyone else on the street. It's great. I get into it. There's definitely two houses that don't have a recycling bin anymore. No, they absolutely do. Everyone's got recycling bins. They're just idiots and sent, sent more. I love That's it. Cool, isn't it? Uh, what do I really give a fuck about? Yeah, stand up. This. Nando's. I don't, I don't know. Nando's man. with Finn. Your cock. Just you two. No one else around. A good Nando's is, you do notice it. Simple pleasure, though. It is a simple you pleasure. You notice it? Yeah. <laughs> There's you a difference swore. between an average Nando's and a good Nando's. Oh, yeah. There's totally. never, it's very rare you get a bad Nando's. Um, yours is music, innit? My, mine used to be clubbing, but I just grew out of it. Yours is definitely music. Mm -hmm. What's your thing that gets you? Did you used to be like into clubbing? Like, I, we've all been in the club. In the club. We've all been no, clubbing. You, no. Were you a club? It's a different club experience well, different that he was doing. Club. I wasn't going like, like Pop World's a club, innit? Yeah. That's not that club. That's clubbing now, innit? That is clubbing. It's clubland. Right, when, when, when I say I used to go clubbing, it won't pop world Preston. <laughs> just to let you know. You've missed out. I mean, I'd still probably ended up there. 
No, I didn't actually. I was pretty. So is your club and like the stuff from like uh, Fifty First State? Yeah, the, uns- the one that Icky runs, and everyone's on the fucking POS Fifty Ones. Everyone's on the sticky Icky. Yeah, what the know? fuck's a POS? I was oh, that what it was the the placebo thing. Yeah, power suggestion Fifty One. Yeah. yeah, I was. I was dead into it. I was doing all of this stuff. stuff like what was your move? Here. Yeah. Were you doing a jump style? What was my move? To take pills and think I look good. No, but what was like your go-to like... Bah, 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 bah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. That was your move. No, glow sticks and that? <laughs> no, I never, we never did glow sticks. Lasers at the ceiling. That's too much. Foam party. Although when the klaxons came out, all of a sudden, at like the warehouse project, people had like glow sticks and stuff. So I never... I thought that just looked fucking tragic. Oh, yeah. Were you like stupid. a two-stepper? Bah, 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 bah. A two stepper. Yeah, I want to know what you mean. I love the idea of you being off your head on pills, dancing like a twat, seeing someone with a glow stick going, they look fucking stupid. Was that your move? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good club of move, though. <laughs> I was still in character as Dan, so it was him who looked stupid when his apple off then. <laughs> You're not bad, Dan. <laughs> fucking idiot. Can you, can you stand up and just, like, um, just take, you back, take yourself back for like 65 years? You're in the club and, like, I don't know. DJ Jazzy Jeff's just come on. Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> I didn't do all that. Why? You fucking did. No, I didn't. When you were off your head on I've not, I've not got that much fucking. The truth is, I never really, like, choreographed any moves. You're just off your barnet and what was your you just get into it. What was your club in attire? Just like t- just t-shirt and jeans, neon vests. No, but did you wear like shades in the club? <laughs> neon see-through neon, vests. Neon vest. I wear shades no. in the club. I had spiky hair. Yeah, I didn't need. I didn't need fucking. In my head, you look like Keith Flint. Accessories. A little bit. No, not really. Did you ever dye your hair? You yeah. White, like Keith Flint. I had a mohawk. Like Keith Flint. <laughs> no, I didn't look anything like. Who's him. Keith Flint? Prodigy. Prodigy. Yeah, you did a bit, didn't you? Yeah, I've got some. How do you know his name? <laughs> is that I've from, seen him Is that from 51st State? I've seen him, he's dead now he is. Oh by the way, we saw the new before he got pulled down, isn't that good? That is the <laughs> ultimate screech <laughs> It's getting pulled down today have you, or this week uh, have you Is it, from, yeah Have yeah. you gone from Keith Flint to Keith the Flint died, died and now the camp news died Where are the Barcelona playing next season? Uh, I don't know, but it's, uh, if you watch it, this, like, the stands are getting pulled down. They told us about that, though, didn't they? Yeah. They are redeveloping Sad. It. It's going to look like every other stadium in the Europe. It's just going to look like, a, like a, you know, a dome rather than like this historic place. I'm glad we saw it before it went, though. That's it great. They shit, delayed though, doing it? that to the San Siro. Yeah, it was meant to be. Yeah. They, it was meant to be next summer, but it's not. Just leave them. Just, like, just redecorate them. <laughs> They're all, like, got structural problems. The new, new Camp's piece of shit, though, really, isn't it? Yeah, but, like, it's... Iconic, but we walk through the bowels of it, and you're like, "Yeah, this is not in great nick." Yeah, yeah. but that's like saying the Colosseum is a piece of shit. Just leave yeah, but it. no, but Barcelona, uh, Rome, Roma don't play at the Colosseum every week, do they? For good reason. Yeah, a hundred and ten thousand people aren't at the Colosseum. Going, ah, it doesn't matter about the structure. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me sad. I'm glad we saw it though. I feel like we've like I've saw Notre Dame for it burnt down as well. That made me happy. The school. <laughs> yeah, by ours. <laughs> it's on fire. I saw that last week. <laughs> Oh my god! I'm, I'm happy I saw these things before they've gone. Do you have a break? Yeah. R.I.P. New Camp. What's happening, ladies and gentlemen? It's time to tell you about our absolute favourite sponsor, Fume. Now, Dan, you've got a fume in your hand there, and you've been fuming for a while now, haven't you? You're absolutely always fuming. Absolutely fuming. Me and Carl come in every week, and we're like, "You are fume." Because I've not got enough snakes. <laughs> Fume is uh, a diffusion device, and it uses all natural flavors. It uses flavored air. It's completely natural. It's innovative. It's award-nominated. And, you know, when you're trying to break some bad habits, you don't need some mind-altering voodoo. You just need something that's going to make it a little bit easier. And Fume are trying to approach that problem differently. And you like it, don't you? You're having a little go there. I do. The action. The action that I'm used to, we all know what we're talking about. It's bad for you. Every version of it is bad for you. This is a much better option. It's the action of doing it. You get to fidget with it. Quitting all of these things is hard work. Go to tryfume.com and use the promo code WEIRD. You get 10% off when you get the journey pack. The journey pack includes this, a few different flavors. That's tryfume, F-U-M, dot com, and use the promo code WEIRD for 10% off your order. Get on me. Try to sneak. A toddler. 
Hvad er det? Is that good, Sneak Dom? What was that? Sneak's that good, isn't it? What flavor is that? It's um, one of the flavors. Oh. And I really like that flavor. What are yeah. your favorite? Sneak is great. Can you get a few phone, please? Yeah, I'm going to ring Laura and just check if we can go to uh, Etta's uh, school sports day. So you can't be on your phone on the pod. I'm never on the phone. You're always on the phone? Remember, clip bastard. Yeah. Okay. Daniel. Clear bastard. Um, how, how are you, my love? You all right? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, really good. Um, it, just a couple of questions. We're just trying to plan next year and we've had uh-huh. a bit of an idea, you know, because I'm such a great dad. Um, you, uh-huh. know, et, you know, Etta's sports day next year. Yeah. Um, obviously, I'll be there unless we arrange a holiday where I'm not. Um, yeah. Just... <laughs> Just an idea. Every member of the Have a Word team uh, come in to Etta's Sports Day dressed in some sort of like Etta shirt, probably with Etta's face on it, and maybe 10 or 15 patrons. What do you think? I think she'll be traumatized and you'll have to pay for the therapy. Hi. I think she'll <laughs> love it. I think she'll be really into it. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe, no. maybe run it past Mrs. Prentice. Well, Lord, and it's happening, Gail. Get on board now, right now. <laughs> se- second question. F- how do you feel about flares? Can we use flares? Um, not the for jeans. For who? Uh, no. You? Yeah, for us. Yeah, we're not giving flares to I Etta. think she thinks you mean oh, jeans. Oh, I thought you meant flares as in trousers. She did as well. <laughs> <laughs> You see, we could have we could have avoided yeah. so much trouble last year if we were just talking about fashion items. <laughs> um, all right. We- <laughs> I we'll, think some people would have still found a way to be upset. We'll, uh, all right. If you could speak to the school, uh, okay. I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll get it booked sure. in. Sure. All right. Yeah, I'll do it. No problem. Love you very much. Bye, Laura. Right. We love you. Love you. Bye. Love you. Bye. It's Bye. happening. Bye. 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 I mean, that's a tentative, yeah, innit? Yeah. Clip bastards into it. It's happening. Yeah, she yeah, just yeah, needs yeah. to get over herself. There you go. <laughs> right. We're going, we're going sports day. She's chilling out, you know. She right. used to be really uptight. Yeah. She's chilling out, I think. She gets where the, the bread's buttered. Yeah. 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 This is where the fucking we this bought is, the bread, yeah, This is the butter factory, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the name of the studio from now on. <laughs> the theatre of the on, Welcome to the butter factory. That's what I'm saying with every guest. Back for part well, I, three. I mentioned, the I mentioned a bonk on the Patreon exclusive, and I was absolutely shit in it that she'd kick off. She listened to it first thing this morning and went, Yeah, I'm not bothered. She's she wants more. Yeah, you she phoned, wants more bonks. Yeah. Dan oh, phoned yeah. me with the fear yesterday you morning. You phoned know, the busies. But I get hangover fear. I, I've st- it's started to hit in now. Every hangover. And you rang I'm Finn. F- you didn't ring me. You didn't ring Carl. Didn't put it in the management group. You rang your little fucking Nando's nonsense. You know why? Because he's a yes man. Right. Yes, daddy, you're fine. Yes, you. I'll do. I'll cut everything out. I'll make sure Carl does exactly the edit she wants as long as I get to suck your cock again. That is Finn's voice, isn't it? It's amazing. He can do accents and he can do Welsh. Imagine ringing Adam when you had the hangover fear. Like, that's not the... He wouldn't be listening. He'd be on his phone. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, lad, yeah. I do that quite a lot when people ring me. Yeah, so do I. While you're actually scrolling while I'm just speaking. Yeah. I'm sorry, speaker. speaker. No offence, but he's not my first hangover fear call. You know what I mean? Am I up there? Yeah, you're... you, You give stick on pod, but you're very supportive off pod. And Finn just, you know, gives me the support I need. Anal support. But she was absolutely fine. Oh, Steve, do you need me to pay for the dinner? Or you need Dan to pay for the dinner? We've got lunch on the way. Uh, yeah. Shall we do some questions? Yeah. We yeah. should. So this first one is genuinely, I think, the weirdest question we've ever received. I, I, no. I think that's a lot of big talk. Recency bias. All right. Well, it's up there then. This is from James McDonough. Um, oh my god, you've got a James McDonald tribute. You start coming in the haven't you? Oh, uh, you've got me. Yeah, Mache. So he <laughs> says, Wag Wag Lids, curious to hear what you lads think of this, as I know what I would do, but my brother thinks I'm mental. You go for a shit in a public toilet and there's multiple cubicles. One is occupied. As you enter, the fella leaves his cubicle. Do you go into the one he has left to benefit from his warmth left on the toilet seat or shit on one of the unused cold ones? Love the pod and think you lads are boss. Cheers, James Mack. If anyone, if anyone, anyone ever in a room with several toilet cubicles waits for the the warm one, you're weird because it's so nice. It's like a little bum hug. 
Yeah, is that what you're going to say? What are we talking about? That this is, is that that's arrestable, sure. Is that illegal? <laughs> <laughs> that feels illegal. Using someone else's bum warmth. <laughs> oh, that's pathetic. On a warm day. Oh. On a warm summer's evening. <laughs> On a toilet that was occupied. That's awful. With a little no. bit of bum sweat. Do you, he, so he's waiting as well. He's not even like. Uh, sorry, just one sec. You know, if you ever go into a cubicle and you look at the toilet seats <laughs> and there's droplets on it, yeah. that's not bum sweat that. Someone's pissed on the toilet seat. On the, uh, I reckon on a warm day, you could get that like ass based condensation left. Yeah, but it's not a drop, is it? It's not a drop, oh, you it's can, like some you residue. Can residue. It's the Jew. It's the Jew. It's the Jew. Yeah. Don't go into a toilet if there's Jews on the toilet seat. D-U-E. Yeah. D no D-U-E Jews. Fact. Pay your Jews. Um, I mean, so, it, <coughs> honestly, Finn. Yeah. It's a categoric. <laughs> yeah, it's a, genuinely, call the police on yourself. You go into, just to be clear, you go into one of the ones that wasn't occupied. Just to be clear, I want this to be clear. Ice cold. Yeah. That's okay. disgusting. Cool. Sometimes I don't go for the first one. I in my head, I go into the if the, even if all the cubicles are free, I'll go to the one that's furthest away because in my head, less people have used it. Yeah. Oh, I'm not, I, if I, you I, walk in and there's the obvious, this is the first one. I'm like, that's gonna have had more ass. Yes. On so you the go seat. for like the. Th Say there's say there's eight. You go for the third to last one. Where are you one. shitting you? Eight, eight, like in a eight? In, a, in, in like airport, a airport or something. Yeah, right. yeah. I'm I'm not often shitting. Don't know about you, toilets. but my toilet seat at home is 39 degrees Celsius. Oh my god! I've got a Japanese one. Have you? Do you, do you have your set me for Christmas. Do you have your set of 39. Oh, 36. Oh, I'm 39, 39. Oh god! I like the warm. Oh god. <laughs> So we don't have to worry at home. We what I was saying was, was, if you go in in a public toilet, it's hypothetically of eight, I would go for the fifth or sixth one because I would do what Dan does and go, right, the first two people are going to go to them. And then the other, the people like you would go, I'll go to the no, end I'm going one. Oh, so you're, go in the, you're, pay, you're double bluffing it. Yeah. You're like thinking go a step ahead. One. Yeah. Go I go in the one. first one because I don't have a choice. You two are exercising disgusting white privilege there. Yeah. White privilege. Oh, nicely done. Lovely little topper. Next question, Finn. This yeah. one is from Donny. So there's a Spanish fella. Donny Osmond's in there, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> there's a Spanish fella in North Korea who has emigrated there to run foreign relations and publicity for the government. If you had that job, what would you do to change the public image of North Korea to make the country and Big Fat Kim likable? What? There's a Spanish guy... Been who's the head of PR for he's North Korea. He's, na he's now dead that we've mentioned them. Oh he's my dead. God. I thought you couldn't get in. So day one, you get that job. What's priority one to make North Korea more palatable to the rest of uh, the world? Right. I'm not guessing what Adam's going to say, but I'm going to lean on his knowledge and passion for fucking water parks. A North Korean water park. It's not going to fix everything, but let's go big with the fucking... Let's right. get a massive Siam, but bigger and probably more racially sensitive. And you're inviting sensitive. people to North Korea for the launch of the war. It's Pyong a start, in it? Pyongyang Park. Yeah. Yeah. Pyongyang Park. Being at Pyongyang Park, lad, heavy, you know. Get the fast pass, though, lad. Heavy. There's only like six people there. <laughs> it's a dollar. I'd get uh, Kim. Is it Kim? Is yeah. he the guy? Yeah. I'd get Kim some drip. I'd get him some streetwear. Oh, I'll get him some heavy webs. Some good trainees, nice little varsity jacket. And just do a photo shoot with him. And then put it on billboards all around the world. So. <laughs> Fucking Android Hom. <laughs> <laughs> no, he doesn't like Homs. I'm Kim Young in. Fucking North Face. Fuck the South. North Face Korea. Yeah. North Korea face. That's my face. <laughs> That's the outfit. Everyone's like, wow, actually, North Korea is sound. That's he wears North Face. Loads of sliders, North Face, fucking water. I do park. think his clothes are a big part of the reason people don't like him. I think yeah. if he had some fucking he's dressed like flave. A pup. He's dressed like a puppet. Yeah. Like, it looks like he's got no legs. I I think what you've done there, Carl, right, <laughs> is you've seen Team America World Police, <laughs> yeah. right? Hans Bricks. And you've gone, he looks like the puppet of him. Hans Bricks. Not his dad, isn't it? That was Kim Jong il, wasn't it? Yeah. He was hell, yeah. Have you ever seen his legs? <laughs> Just before That's he why died. He's dead. Yeah. Fucking huh? echo chamber. I said that about six months ago. Suck on it. 
Did you? Yeah. No, that's good. Never seen his legs. Yeah. yeah. Came young guns. Is this a conspiracy? Oh, what? are we in, are we introducing it? Oh no. Have you ever seen Kim Jong Un's legs? No. Uh, we're doing a new section called Carl's Conspiracy Corner. Carl's a conspiracy theorist now, and he's got some. <laughs> Can we do it? Can someone make us a jingle? I'll say it. You ready? <laughs> Carl's Conspiracy Corner. You That's not going to be enough for a jingle, lad. No, they just make. No, it. you've got to you've got to sing some. Carl's Conspiracy Corner. I'm a chatting shit, or is it real? <laughs> There we go. It's time for conspiracies. Are they real or are they full of shit? That's how a pro does it. All right. I mean, let's see if the section works before you spend too much time. So doing the all fucking I want to do is I want you to write in your conspiracies or, you know, famous ones you've heard about. One, I've got plenty. I'm going to be yeah. feeding you for weeks. Here. Don't give me like, no, the level was bush. We've all done that. I want, I want ones that are like, oh, I've this is a mad one. And I want you to send me proof. Don't just send me like this. I want proof. The first one I'm going with is Stevie Wonder isn't blind. <laughs> Dan, what's your first opinion? Like first impression of this? What evidence have you got? Loads. Go on. Uh, it says here, it's a PR stunt to sell more albums. <laughs> I don't think anyone's buying this stuff because he's blind. No, but I feel like more people are. It is much more impressive than playing the piano. Exactly. Like, it isn't though, is it? Like, yeah. I, you couldn't play the piano. A blind, blind person playing the piano over a... Pianists a, a, never look at the piano when they're playing it. They're always like looking like... You haven't never seen Elton John? He's like, fucking Jill Dando or whatever his fucking <laughs> song is. He's looking over there. Fucking and he, Jill Dando. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, his biggest hit. Yeah. That's the first one that came to mind. But they don't like... They don't look at what they're doing a lot of the time, do they? Yeah. They're always like... Yeah, they're not, they're not, they're not going... You're meant to be Goodbye, back in this. Goodbye, my oh, lover. Yeah. <laughs> no. Goodbye, my friend. Elton John. You have been the one. You <laughs> have been the one for me. He's looking at the audience. He's not looking at the piano. Being blind is not a fucking hindrance to learning the piano. All right. It would, it would be shit if you went to see like Lewis Capaldi live and he was like, hang on. <laughs> hang on. No, I can't. Ah. Yeah. yeah. A little bit they know. Also, aren't a lot of like piano tuners. A lot of piano tuners are blind, aren't they? Because it's a heightened... Are you starting guns? What's going, going on? Going? <laughs> What's happening? Do you have to be blind or did he turn blind? Oh, no, it's not like... Yeah. I don't so, think it's a prerequisite. You mean nice. tuning a piano by ear? Having right, perfect I've pitch. seen a piano He's tuner. Seen one He's talking about the fact that people tuner. who lose one sense have their other ones heightened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there's loads of but blind I'm piano tuners. I'm pretty sure tuning a piano now would be done electronically with... A, a ch with some sort of tuner. Yeah, if you hate blind people, yeah. <laughs> but if you love blind people, get one of them lads. You have to get them a taxi yeah. though. That's part of the cost. What do you think about people who have that condition where they can't recognise faces? Joanna Lumley. She got it. What's going on? No, I can't. What, no, I called. can't. It's I called. can't recognise Joanna Lumley. It's called Joanna Lumley syndrome. <laughs> yeah. It's a fucking nightmare. Does she have it When done? I'm watching people, I'm like, hang on, is that Joanna Lumley? It's like, no, it's... David Trezeguet, you're watching. Gway? Uh, David Trezeguet. <laughs> 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 oh, you saying? Is that John and Lumley? Oh no, I'm mistaken. It's David Trezeguet. <laughs> Who's that playing up front for uh, Juventus? I think it's John I know Lumley. a woman who used to have that... Um, David Trezeguet disease. <laughs> the the Trezeguet <laughs> syndrome. And she used to recognise people by their demeanour and smell. Right. So what is this? What if I've not heard of this? So there's people who have a condition where they can't, like... The stick, like they would look at you and Carl and not know which one. So it's like based on your face for faces. Yeah, right, face but blind. like they would not. Like she would know that you're you based on your posture because she learns your posture because she can make out your silhouette and his silhouette and she would know. I mean, right now you both look identical silhouette wise. By the way, it's mad. <laughs> but yeah, what happens if you're having a hangover because you smell different and you act different, don't you? And yeah, I, I, I never met her when I was hungover, so I didn't know. Uh... Who's Joanna Lumley? Yeah. So what? <laughs> she's a great, she's a great striker, though. Um, what do you think? Uh, second bit of proof? Yeah. He once caught a falling microphone on stage in capitals like a non-blind person would do. Where are you getting your... Uh, where are you getting that from? Where's uh, the... Harry. Where's your sauce? Harry Robinson. Harry. Where are you getting your sauce there? I want it just... I'm just interested. Hang on, go on. Mm. This was on stage uh, at the 2010 I've seen White it. House. Yeah, he starts he juggling. He starts and juggling with it. <laughs> <laughs> Takes his glass off and that's going. <laughs> and goes, oh shit! 
Fun he also sort of. recognised Shaq in a in a, a lift, didn't he? I, th I think if you blindfolded me, I'd know I was in a lift with Shaq. <laughs> I'd, uh, you always know if you're in a lift with Shaq. <laughs> yeah. that, no, I mean, do. you do. No. Because there's a massive seven foot eight black No, you could blindfold me and I would know I'm in a lift with Shaq. <laughs> oh God, I would love to test that. <laughs> Who's in no, the lift with Adam? Shaq or no Shaq? Um, third one, he took a photo of Michael Jackson when the two of them went to the Motown Museum. Blind people can't take photos. Not good Say ones. that again. Uh, he took a photo of Michael Jackson when they were in the motel and museum together. Why can't blind people take photos? Not good ones. It was apparently a good photo. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Jackson went, fucking hell, look good there. You're not blind. <laughs> um, an anonymous former girlfriend said it was a gimmick he did to stand out. And he's, <laughs> he's, sting he's since been stuck with sunglasses. <laughs> Next one. Maybe he was trying to get his dog into Wagam Wagamama's. I think... <laughs> Um, Mate, that is a mean ex-girlfriend, isn't it? Right, I'm fucking pissed off with you. He's not even blind. Uh, the last two are the ones that seal the coffin for me. He goes to watch basketball. <laughs> and boy George thinks he's not blind. <laughs> Those last two really seal the coffin. Loads of blind people go to sporting events, though. They do, but... We're, know, we're only won. one step away from boy George now. So Stevie Wonder says swish when someone throws her. We could get we could get the justification for that because I think you've just got a bullet point, haven't you? It says boy George thinks he's not blind. Yeah, why? What's he? What does he know? Boy, right in lad. I'm glad you did so much research, Carl. <laughs> How he did it for me. <laughs> Stevie Wonder isn't blind. Bosh, do you agree or disagree? Proved. Comment. <laughs> Comment below. I don't think he's black either. <laughs> that was a really nasty ex-girlfriend that said that. <laughs> <laughs> Racist bitch. He isn't even black. He goes to watch basketball and boy George. He's a Chinese football. guy, you can see. It's a fact. That's Jackie Chan. Oh, yeah. How much do I want to see <laughs> Adam <laughs> Rowe? I was getting them mixed up. Blindfolded in a lift with Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> I want to see it so much. It's good that. I can see that flying. Get it's more written in. Get him in. Get Should him in. We Get do him. some. <laughs> I can hear the noise of Adam going, what the fuck? Oh, I'm going to be, I'm leaning into that, mate. Let's do some underrated, overrated. Go on, Dan. Underrated, overrated. Yeah. Overrated, Icelandic jugglers. The Icelandic hockey team. <laughs> I think they're shit. This is from Brad Stockley. So this is a uh, chippy go. edition. So we've just got a few from the chippy. Okay. Bad oh, sausage. I'm trying to fucking be f we've not got fat. food on the way. I know. A saveloy. I'm going to have fucking, I'm having chicken that's been grilled in a minute. Grilled thin. Yeah. Not deep fried and full of fucking MSG. Grilled chicken. It's not going to satisfy me. After we're sat here talking about chippies for 20 minutes, I'm is having it? lentil soup through choice. You're just a fucking weird cunt, though, aren't you? That much an opinion on a Savaloy? Oh. L what is it? A big battered sausage. Oh, is it the big old fucking yeah. dirty sausage? I don't like the batter on it. It just, it, it makes it, it taste greasy. I like a chippy sausage. A battered sausage. I love a chippy just... sausage, but a battered sausage oh, is Oh, horrible. is that what he said? Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, battered him. I like over a battered sausage. Yeah, over I don't anymore, but I did I, before I was veggie. You like to batter a sausage? Is my love <laughs> a sausage in a batty? <laughs> Either one. <laughs> Should have just kept quiet, shouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Bastard sausage is horrible. Bastard anything that isn't like cod that has to be just to fry it properly. And even that, like I, I end up picking some of the batter off it. Batter's just grease. Yeah. yeah it's tasty I don't grease. mind a battered fish though. <laughs> if it's, <nice. laughs> it's tasty grease. <laughs> Can you have anything battered as a veggie? They do veggie battered sausages in Aldi. They're not, it's not the same. Well, you made them sound dead good. Yeah, yeah. they got worse. No, yeah. it's, it's not. The best vegan sausages are the Linda McCartney Linda ones. McCartney are the goats, fact. Uh, have you ever tried Linda McCartney battered? Oh. You ever seen the, the Paul She's one with one leg, isn't she? No. No, that's. I, all, I genuinely no. all That's Millsy. Yeah, Heather Mills. Right. Danny Mills. Have you ever seen the Paul McCartney Meat Free Monday video? No. Okay, we'll watch that in the break. He's had a breakdown because he's a vegetarian like activist. And he starts doing some reggae song and reggae dance. Oh, I've seen it. You have seen it? Yeah. Okay, cool. It's fucking perfect. Check it out if you've not seen it. Right, the next one. Chip, chip. I don't, I've not seen this in a chippy before. Donna meat. It is in some chippies. This, some, this lad must be chippy. a scouser. Yeah. 
Because a lot of chippies are all encompassing in Liverpool. And they're all Chinese, at least. But then some of the Chinese ones also go, I will do some Donnemies. <laughs> Donnemies, I think, is uh, it gets a really bad rap and it's actually quite good. So I think Donnemies is underrated fact. Sweet chilli and tahini on your Donnemies, mate. Garlic and hot chilli. Is there such a thing as a good Donnemies and a bad yeah, Donnemies? The because oh, they yeah, all yeah. look yes. the oh, same, no, don't absolutely. they? And the then, Botan's the best. The Abro Botan is the best in Liverpool. Abroad, it's another level. Because they don't use the shit meat, they use the nice meat. So what it's what like animal is it? Lamb. Are you, are you sure? Donner meat? Yeah. Yeah, it's lamb. Mm. Well, I'm not. That's part of the reason I went veggie, but that that's what it is. Uh, Donner meat, if you get it, like when they've just put a fucking, oh. when they've just shaved it off and it doesn't come out of the little tub that they've like shaved ages ago. The sweaty tub. Freshly shaved off Donner meat when you're starving oh and you're just God. craving it. Because sometimes I just get a craving for it. I don't want it in a pitta. No. I like it on a burger bun. Ooh. I want like a Donner sandwich with hot chili and garlic and some, I I prefer it with chippy chips to like fries. <sighs> Mixing it up. I like, I just get a tray of meat with sweet chili and tahini on. Bosh. Bondi used to get it on a pizza. Donner meat pizza. It's great on a pizza. Yeah. Mixed Under Donner the cheese. Meat pizza is unbelievable. Under oh, the so cheese. that's the chicken yeah. as well. Chicken and lamb Donner meat So you, you go, this is oh. what you do, right? You go tomato sauce, oh. the marinara on the, on the pizza, right? Yeah. Uh, pepperoni, spicy beef, and oh. donnemies, and then the cheese goes over it top, yeah. and keeps all the toppings oh. within the pit. Oh. When you get mayo on that, Adam, how long is this diet going on for? Seven oh. weeks, Finn. Okay, so when you're on tour in real, can I take you to my gaff and you can have whatever donnemy you pizza you want? Yeah, because yeah, cool. he's staying over. Yeah. No, but I'll, we'll There's no way it. I'm lasting seven weeks, by the way. I'm going to give it a good go, though. I'm going to yeah. have a, probably a cheat day tomorrow. Oh, mate, I'm fucking... I would smoke a Donna Cheat day Thursday, isn't it? Pizza, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, next <laughs> one. Mushy peas. I don't like them. I, I like them on, like... Do you know once every, like, five or six years, I get a sausage dinner? Like, very, very rarely when I'm going to the chippy do I go for that. But sometimes someone suggests a chippy and I'm like... I just want a sausage dinner. And when I get a sausage dinner, three sausages, oh. chips, peas, and then the gravy over all of it. Oh. I reckon mushy peas must be overrated then, because if, if you're referencing it once every five or six years, it can't be like underrated, can it? It's just a garden pea. Yeah. Like, oh, tell no, you what, that's fucking... Not on a sausage psychopath dinner. Psychopath behaviour. Garden peas are terrible. I like a garden It pea. looks bad, mushy peas, when it comes out. Yeah. Mushy peas are the best type of peas. Yeah. That is undeniable. And do you know, here's a little hint. Here's a little uh, trick for you. Go on. You know, if you're ever having it at home, yeah. get some mint sauce, Ooh. put it in the tin of peas and mix it all in so that it's like a bit minty. It's spicy. Oh, not bad. I'm fucking hungry. Right, the last one of this, uh, this chippy round is fruity curry sauce. No, dog shit. Dog shit. Do you know uh, in a chippy, you want the curry sauce to look like it's on its way to being red? Yeah. Like the... It, you want it to be like the orangey brown color it is, but it needs to have like a hint of red in it. Yeah. Is that like, are you talking sweet curry, the fruity one? Like the sweet it's curry like, sauce? It's like, it has like raisins and it. Yeah, it's, it has raisins yeah. and shit. And you normally get it on like a, in a, like a seaside chippy that, like Blackpool and Brighton, that you'll go can I have curry sauce and that and they'll be like, hey, do you want uh, the normal one or the fruity one? Coronation chicken has raisins in it. with that mm -hmm. kind of sauce. Fruity curry is not the one. Right, okay. Couple more underrated, overrated. See us out. Uh, it's a left turn now. So this is from Walkden Scott. Elvis. Okay, this one does my nutting. I think he's massively overweight, overrated. Overweight. And he can stick, <laughs> he can stick <laughs> he those blue suede shoes down his jailhouse cock. He's dead. Big hunk of shite. So. Elvis was unbelievable. And if you've seen the Elvis film, you respect him even more. I mean, I know we kind of stole music from black culture, but he was. <laughs> but out. forget about that. He did it well. He did. <laughs> no, but I'd love to go and see Elvis live back then when he was like literally changing the world. I think with, with like old musicians of any type, I think it's very easy to go, I don't get the hype in the modern era. I think it's quite easy for people now to look at Beatles songs and go, that's Basic. not as good as... Yeah. Like, there's people who will think Oasis is a better band than the Beatles because music moved on. And techniques got better that they will have learned. And because they were inspired by it, it's like an evolution of that type of music. But without the Beatles, Oasis don't even exist in the first place. Fuck. So people look back on these 
like sort of godfathers of genres of music. And they can go, that's not like as good as what people in that same genre are doing today. But they they influenced and created what we're seeing today. And without them, they wouldn't have existed. Just on a today note, though, Fuck. I can still listen to Beatles. And I, I, still, I still really enjoy listening to it. Absolutely. I have never put the Elvis on. Like oh, I've either. heard some of his stuff. So I get it. You've got a the even when that Pepsi of, advert was on. Context of musical history doesn't do loads for me. Just yeah, I'm all right. <laughs> Come on, baby, I'm tired of talking. Grab your tits and. So Christopher Walken off. I don't know what's the next line. That's it. Oh. That's it. No, you nailed it. You nailed it. Great, I love Elvis. Great have you listened to Elvis all the time? No, I don't. He's so do I don't listen good. to Elvis really, but I do listen to the Beatles. I listen to Elvis in the car a lot. That's what I got. So I could see why someone would think it's overrated because important, massively important, but it doesn't. He is an icon and the literally the godfather of his music so how can he be overrated well, well, it's those, it's those two it's like, will, will, so it's, it's like you're willfully not, not yeah. listening to what I'm saying like yeah. I get no, I'm it not saying you, him. Ma massively not you him, massively important saying? but I don't think the music like I, there's a lot of music from that era that still still does it for me but I don't Johnny Cash doesn't, like Johnny Cash yeah, I prefer for Elvis kids shag kids she was no he didn't shag her he met her when they were 14 and he, he raped her he married her. He was there. To be fair. He bombed At least off. it was a paedophile with commitment. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Oh. yeah. Okay. Um, I think Elvis is, and the film is one of the best music biops ever. Biopics ever. It's incredible. Good. Yeah, it's just Tom Hanks in it. Tom Hanks is stupid in it though. It's me, gold member. Do you know what? Um, Don't Elvis ruin it though manager. by saying something like he dies in the end. You know what I mean? Don't ruin another film like that. Carl. Elvis doesn't die. He yeah. doesn't die. Well, he, he lives okay. yeah, to the Not present day. He, he does it. No, I won't say. It just blows someone's head off. It lives on forever in spirit. Right, this cool. one is from... He's dead, though. I'm going to try and get her name right, because she writes in a lot, and she's a, one of our biggest fans. Julia Shola Amiobi. Ju <laughs> Julie Kukowska. Julia Kukowska. Julia. It's Julia. She's Julia on all socials. She's a lovely... Yeah. Kukowska. Kaka. Yeah, th is, that's how you say it. <laughs> Kaka. Uh, so, underrated, overrated. A flavoured pint. A little raspberry stigel, uh, a strawberry pint, or even pouring a syrup into a normal pint. My <laughs> auntie always has raspberry syrup in her Guinness. <laughs> Adam. Adam. Would that make it a 9.8? I like a fruly. You, All of these things are shit. And I can tell you why, right? People talk about them and they go, oh, I love a fruly, me. I can only have one now. It's because it's horrible. Because you get to the end of it and you go, I just about tolerated that and I can't possibly put myself through it again. People don't like them. I can drink, eat. I had 12 pints of Guinness before we came off stage in Dublin and then had about another eight more. I can drink Guinness all night because it's fantastic. These fruity flavoured shites. Now, bollocks. All this foreign mock. <laughs> <laughs> Are you the European same? beers, like all the fancy ones. Bel I said it when I come back from Brussels. Belgian beers are shit. Left. And people Lefe. pretend to like them because the they want to seem cultured. What's the wheaty one? Whole Garden. Yeah. It's all right. Can I have one? Don't know. I can have Not one. And then it. I'm like, I don't but want it. Sounds it sounds like pussy, doesn't it? Whole Garden? Yeah. If someone said, look at me, Whole Garden. <laughs> if they were holding a pine, you'd be like, I can't see your pussy. <laughs> Yeah. I think I know what he meant. No, it was if a lady a saying it. Oh, right, right, right. Look at my hoe garden. Get it out then, love. <laughs> I'm just stand there sipping your drink, whatever that shit is. <laughs> oh, it's a hoe garden. <laughs> Are you the same with uh, like coffee? Do you do any of the flavoured coffees or is it just, you know what you like? Uh, every now and then in the summer, I'll get like a vanilla latte. Ooh. But like, I just, I just prefer coffee with it. I get milk in mine and some people are like, oh, you don't love coffee. They taste coffee then. You need milk in it. I get the milk in it to cool it down and to thicken it up slightly because black coffee tastes thin. Mm. I can see why all these options are available, but uh, I reckon the fruit beer thing, it turned up when? About 10, 15 years ago. Can't remember seeing it before then. I don't think it's like massively rated by people anymore. I think it's died off a bit, hasn't it? Yeah. Like the I think the appeal again. sort of went away. It's but, for Europeans who want to have three drinks. Those fucking fruity Europeans. <laughs> you know that? what they're like? La-di-da-di-da, -di -da, we're still in the European Union. Put a bit of raspberry in my fucking Guinness. 
weirdos. Right. <laughs> Last one. This is from Maurice Collins. She just says sparkling water. Oh, it tastes like static. Shite. If you pick that over still, go to jail. It's so, underrated. It's a massive thing in Ireland, isn't it? It's underrated. Apparently. It is it underrated. It tastes like paracetamol. It's underrated because people like you kick off about it like it's the fucking end. It ending. tastes like paracetamol. It doesn't. Television. It tastes like fizzy water. Oh. It just <laughs> tastes like fizzy water. It's fine. Like every now and then, maybe twice a year. I, I get a sparkling water instead of a still. Majority of the time, it's still. Because it is, it, it is better. The only time I get sparkling water is when I accidentally pick it up and go, oh, I've bought sparkle, and then I put it in the bin. What was the one that you used to make? Is it a soda pot? Soda, soda stream. stream. Soda yeah. pot. So, what was, like, was that stream. what it's called? I think your yeah, mum yeah. lied to you about what a soda stream is meant to do. Yeah, it makes sparkling water. <laughs> 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 it's got one that makes Pepsi. That's shit. That. It just makes sparkling water. Every time I have like sparkling water, it just reminds me of the one time we fucked up and we did. We made a soda stream and it was just like fizzy water. And you're like, it's just shit soda stream. That's how it feels like. I hate it. I it's all right. I genuinely don't. It's like just it. all right. Apparently, it's good for dieting. Why? Right. It's bubbly. Up, fills yeah. you up fills a little up bit. Gas. If you're really on it with the diet, with sparkling diet water. Cold. Yeah. But Diet Coke's not as good for you, is it? It's got a spark. I don't think me. there's enough research into it. Carl, get on it. Uh, next week, <laughs> Coke or sparkling water. Bosh, that's your fucking conspiracy. There you go. I'm going to order a fucking crazy sparkling water on Amazon in the break. I'm starving me. Do it. Hey, you. The podcast's on a little break here, isn't it? There's nothing for you to listen to. So why don't you do us a favour while we're on a break? Like this if you're on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel if you're on YouTube. Leave a comment. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, leave us a five-star review with a nice little comment. If you're listening on Spotify, leave us a five-star review with a nice little comment. Follow no. us online, all our socials, at Have A Word Pod. Give us share a follow. Stuff. If yeah, you see yeah, a video, yeah, yeah. like it and share it. It costs you nothing. Don't makes the world a difference to us, you know what I mean? Being a dick Don't be it. sly. Share it, you fucking lid. Don't be a fucking rat. Welcome to the Butter Factory. <laughs> <laughs> He's been old now, hasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gents, please welcome well known good guy, Mr. Rob Rouse. Yeah. Hello. Stop, stop it. Stop it. I'm a very bad man. A brilliant comedian, but uh, if uh, if I heard a comedian slag you off privately, I would worry about their mental health. <laughs> Thank well. And I don't think Rob Rouse is, uh, you know, he's a bit of a knob. I don't think you have ever been involved in that. Probably one of the most unique. Universally popular comedians. It's you and Andy met. Askins. Everyone else has got something bad to say about yeah. everyone, but you and oh, Andy no. Askins are just the two people no oh, one's no. liked off ever. I, I don't it, trust all... that beady eyed little cunt. I know, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. It's Tell all boding well for when I go off on my first mass killing spree, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. First yeah. mass one. Because you've done story. little mini ones, but your mass one is the one you've been Yeah, exactly. Well, I'll be able to go I'll be able to go big quick. <laughs> first you know as well. Like you can do it again. No one, had, <laughs> no one saw it coming. He was the, you know, he was such a likable guy. They yes, he him. liked weapons, <laughs> but he lives in the countryside. Has there he ever kept... been a murderer, like a mass murderer, who people are like, do you know what? He was a cunt. We should have been onto it. Everyone's always like, he was quiet and unassuming and that, isn't it? Jimmy Savile. Oh, he's not a murderer, but... <laughs> he didn't murder anyone. He just fuck kids, Carl. <laughs> murdered. Oh, I won't say it. I think there was rumours oh. about Hitler wow, before I don't he uh, say you it. Know, really got going, wasn't there? Yeah. I didn't say it! That's for your mind. Okay, I'm saying it's for your mind. Them no. There was rumours about no. Hitler. Yeah, yeah, no. there, were, well, there were probably well-substantiated <laughs> stories about him before he really yeah, got stuck so. in. No one was like, he's just a quiet, unassuming guy. <laughs> yeah, really yeah. likeable. Harold, Harold Shipman. Neighbors, yeah. Harold Shipman looks like a cunt. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> he looked like a dickhead, didn't he? Yeah, but Did he? Yeah. Oh, he just looked a bit like a doctor. Yeah, he did. I mean, he did. I tell you, you've got to watch out for Andy Askins. Aww. Uh, just, I'd love to start beef with one of the nicest people in comedy <laughs> who I genuinely like. That he doesn't like you. But at the oh. risk of coming across as being nice, without sounding like a weird... Because um, I'm, I'm neither of yours dads and I'm not old <laughs> enough fully to be your dads and I wasn't sexually active enough at a young age to be a dad. So I was a late bloomer. How old are you, Rob? Uh, 49, I'll be you can 50. Be, you can and be when did dad. you first start fucking? <laughs> Wait, I, think, How old are you? I think we were about to get a compliment then, and we were like, never mind. <laughs> what, 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 what I was going to say in a slightly avuncular fashion is, uh, I, it, I was thinking on the ride over on the way here, like, because this, I mean, this really, this really went like mahoosive, kind of lockdown-y period, yeah, yeah. wasn't it? And I haven't seen you both properly since pre-pando. Which yeah. you call it now Pando, just because yeah. it's it's just 
we're, we're through, aren't we? We're through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But just genuinely, like, kind of, I mean, I don't know if everyone says this at the start, but what the fucking hell, lads? This is amazing. Yeah. We do have it's a few people who walk incredible. in. That's why we moved here, because we started getting, like, more famous people into Runcorn, and they'd turn up and go, what the fuck is this? <laughs> so we were like, yeah, we need to sort I'd have done Runcorn, lads. I'd have done Runcorn. <laughs> I'd have come every week to Runcorn. But, and, and I love the fact that you, they, this is, have you moved essentially Runcorn brick by brick, like when they moved... Coronation pretty Street. Pretty much, yeah. From Granada to Salford Keys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. pretty much. Yeah. Very similar yeah. move. <laughs> yeah. Better, better couch, yeah. slightly more realistic bricks. But these are but real this. bricks, aren't no, they? No, that's Brick wall slips. paper. That's is it essentially wallpaper, that? You, 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 Carl, you're shitting me. No, that is, no. <laughs> Can't bring him here and stop shitting me. Uh, <laughs> are those not real bricks? It's a, a third brick of a brick. Slips. It's a brick slip. It's basically a, like a that you stick on the wall. But it's tiles. made of brick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah made yeah. of brick, yeah. It is real bricks. They're just really thin. What will they come up with next? Thinner ones. It's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. I've got to touch it now. Is that a cactus? Ah, fuck that cactus. That's a real you cactus. You touched the yeah. cactus. When did cactus we get a cactus? Real. We've had them since we moved in. Two of them. Cactus is real. That's, there's not normally a cactus there. No, yeah, we had a tiki lock It's always been there. It's always been there. There's a man outside with an eight-inch cock. A fake man and a mannequin. Yeah, we saw him. Guy with his hands up in the air. It's like You're kids' right. cartoon. Isn't it? <laughs> There's a man outside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when did you first fuck? Who, me? <laughs> it's a very, very personal question to ask your dad. Um, <laughs> you could be his dad, though. There's 18 years between us. Yeah, what year? Yeah. God, I, 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 I hadn't, didn't write it down the exact year. I, I, I was diary. 17, so mine was 2009. We could work it out, though, Rob. We just take the I year. I think I was born. either 18 or 19. I can't remember. Yeah. I was waiting for the right lady. <laughs> yeah, to take this princess on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish I'd done that. I wish I'd held on to my little V. Do you? Yeah. For someone you special. Too young, Rob. Robbie was 14. Yeah, but that's the life of a choir boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, he was special, though. 14. Yeah, yeah. goodness me. Too, too, too way young. too young. How old was Did, she? She was 42. I mean, because also, like, when, you, when, you're, when you're young, there's so many, like, just huge concepts that are just nebulous, aren't they? I mean, and that one, like, is, I mean, it's a big thing to try and get your head down to 14, isn't it? Yeah. Most adults struggle to get, mo most people spend their whole lives never getting their heads around it. They're the big things. Yeah. But you, I, dealt, you thought, you know, 14. Just a horny little devil. <laughs> Just an awfully horny little devil. And then just... Oh, he wasn't here for this. Do you know he lost his virginity with a whiskey-flavoured condom on? <laughs> <laughs> you What whiskey? It's <laughs> Glenn Fiddick, 12. <laughs> Whichever one the vicar Famous like best. You can't be having a Jim Beam cock. You can't. <laughs> you just can't. It's got to be a fucking single malt if you're putting it on a condom. Well, the, the whole idea of flavoured condoms surely is... I mean, it, it's like... A, Pine air freshener in a toilet, isn't it? It just smells of pine and shit, doesn't it? Yeah. Whereas a condom's always going to taste of whiskey, whatever it is, and serious amount of rubber, isn't it? It's, yeah. rubber it's, it's not going to taste like a, a single malt, is it? You're not going to be swirling it round the glass, looking at the veins on the on the malt. Are you? I it's didn't a... used to understand. Um, I learned this very late in life, the the vagina thing, because I used to think, why why the four? <laughs> I used to think, why the fuck would you need a flavoured condom? Who's getting a blowjob or a condom on? But women can taste with their pussy, can't they? What? Women have like taste buds. So on they can do a blind taste test? No, yeah. come on. Well, I men like. have got, I mean, Dean and Amy famously proved men have got testicle taste buds. Yeah. Really? One minute on a labia. Yeah. I could do a Daz doorstep challenge with my bum crack. <laughs> well. As to whether whether I'd pass it or not What's that do? would be dependent on my bum crack. <laughs> yeah, that's what flavour condoms are for. I never knew that. I always wondered why uh, Laura tasted her own cooking with a flat. It's <laughs> like, oh, this lasagna. This is the If salt. anything, it's too hot. <laughs> she needs a flavour to do that. Whoa. Oh, hang on. No, it needs garlic. That tastes hot. Uh, I don't. I don't think. I think Adam's being flippant. He's telling the truth. He's telling the but truth. But the girls know no, that. No, you can, t that apparently, uh, the taste buds are inside the v vagina. It's not taste buds, but it's similar things. And you'd be able to taste, or you'd be able to, uh, you'd get the sense of it in your mouth. Did you just live fact check that, Harry? I did. Harry? <laughs> yeah, Harry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've got everyone. It's Finn. Finn. It's sorry, Finn. Finn. There's too yeah. many white oh, men. 
It's too many <laughs> there is a Harry, dog. There is a Harry okay. I had a terrible uh, visit when when I arrived because I, I I know I've met some uh, I know I've met you clowns and we've met vaguely yeah, in, yeah. in different circumstances. But it's always that frightening thing where you meet loads of people all in of one course, go and yeah. you know you know none of it's going in because you're too excited to be yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Plus, I'd been hit on the outside by two dogs, which I was not expecting. And I go full Brian Blessed when uh, we've asked when I, I'm meant to do something about them. <laughs> Adore <laughs> dogs. <laughs> I did a warm up once for uh, the 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 Paul O'Grady show on ITV. God rest his little yeah. soul. And Brian Blessed was on, and uh, Paul used to have quite a few dogs, didn't he, on on the uh, on the show? Yeah. And Brian came on, and I think they had about a ten. Because it was live. They had about a ten minute segment until the next break, and Paul got Brian on, and Brian Blessed turned up just wearing like a. A jumper with holes in it and stained tracksuit trousers and walking boots, and uh, and 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 he, and he just got straight on the floor. And he was God, kissing Brian, all of them, really the oh, 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 oh. kissing them all on the mouth for okay. about ten minutes that's in the really studio. Good Can I just stop you for one sec? Because uh, I had a little ADHD moment there where I started thinking about something else, <laughs> uh, and then I thought that was an impression of Paul O'Grady. <laughs> <laughs> He's different have you ever listened? There, there's an amazing podcast actually with Brian Blessed. I think it's Jeremy Vine's What Makes Us Human podcast or something. And they're like 25 minutes. And Brian Blessed talks about just his life. Jeremy Vine asks him, asks him one question. And then every sentence he says is absolutely fucking mind blowing. A surprise. Ooh, I was born in Barnsley. Uh, ooh, and my father was a cold man who's come in, hold me in the palm of his hand. We'd have a bath, a gin bath in the living room. Every <laughs> sentence is like a surprise and he doesn't quite finish it like ADHD and then starts another one that blows your fucking mind. And it's like non-stop. And then I took a shit on the top of Everest. Oh, and it landed on Sherpa Tensing's shoulder. Uh, it by the breeze. Uh, yeah. And, and he just, it's just, it's a never ending stream of absolute batshit madness. Is he still alive? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, he's yeah. still going. I think he is. Yeah. He is might be one of those guys insane. that has a line of coke and then levels out. Because yeah. there's no gears to go from there, is no. there? Because that sounds like he's off his tits on beak. He might be. No. Yeah, it could be. Who knows? It could be. There is rumours of that. That Brian Blessed is a major coke addict. Yeah. Tune in mm -hmm. next week to Cars Conspiracy. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Can't be getting on the floor. Listen, I know I get stick for hating dogs, but getting on the floor and kissing Paul O'Grady's dogs on the lips. Oi, right on the mouth. <laughs> that wasn't a euphemism, was it? <laughs> that's, uh, that's too much. That's I know Kiss you guys love dogs. That's too much. Oh. No, dogs love kissing. Fact. <laughs> yeah, but they love licking their own assholes, don't they? So yeah, but you want someone to lick your asshole, you still kiss Laura. That's a great point. I'll I'll kiss Paul O'Grady's dogs from now on. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for reasoning me out there. Dogs are wrong. We're like getting in and amongst it with like a group of dogs, having them have a little lick. Yeah, kissing them on the face. Yeah. That's how they show affection as mm. well as humans. I right. kiss Wallace all the time. Yeah, yeah. And mm. he's fine. I'm all right. Yeah, yeah. you're right. And you had him. You, you, you can kiss dogs, just don't fuck them. Yeah, Dan, you, you're not meant to take it. You meant to know when to stop. Yeah. yeah. Is that I've, what is that, is your thing, isn't it? It's you don't know when to stop. I've, he thinks kissing dogs is like Pringles, like a gateway drug to fucking animals. He kissed me out of bummy. Yeah, the dogs only want to do the kissing bit. They're in. They're all in for the kissing, no. and that's your lot. No. First base, Wallace, you get two with a dog. What? That's it. Wallace with Vicky Patterson, he was oh, ready to go to all the bases. <laughs> yeah. There's a beautiful lady doing that thing of going, oh, I love dogs and kissing. And it's the first time we've seen Wallace's red rocket. It was it? the first time I saw his erection, yeah. Vicky Patterson. <laughs> She's fit. Hey, he's, he goes to his dogs. Oh, yeah, my first bone oh. I was Vicky Patterson. My old long departed dog, Ron, uh, who we lost about a year <laughs> or so ago. Ron, yeah, yeah, yeah. Came for a Batsy dog, so with the name Ron. You can't rename a second. No, dog, you can can't. You? It's confusing when you throw a stick. <laughs> Go get that, Terry. He's going, what? <laughs> Who's this Terry cunt? I don't know who Terry is. Say, Ron, I go and get it. I ain't running for fucking Terry. I ain't no You've had a talking dog. <laughs> but, he, but Ron, Ron, yeah, Ron, uh, I, I ended up writing shows about it in the past. What, 2009, I wrote an entire show about Ron and his, um, his humping. And um, <laughs> it was called My Family and the Dog That Scared Jesus. And it was a big story that I, I filmed for... It's Comedy Central that I put on YouTube. It keeps getting taken down. And I keep putting it up. It keeps getting taken down. About Ronnie uh, cleaning his lipstick in front of Wallace and Gromit in my mother-in-law's living room. 
the baby on the sofa and it was yeah it was he he, he was insane but Sorry, never was, once made was... love to another dog only ever soft furnishings there was and so himself. many sentences said there that we all that let go. That was like go. a Brian Blessed thing. That. <laughs> what have you just said? <laughs> You're going to have to unbox it for me, Carl. This is my life. He never humped other dogs. It was just like the, yeah, it the was, couch. It, yeah, it was only ever soft furnishings or his own face. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what that was about. I mean, we had a great big red cushion we got from Ikea that eventually had to go in a skip because the insides went solid. But we never <laughs> once saw him emit anything. It just it just perished, basically. <laughs> he fucked it into a skip. Yeah. And then once that went in a skip, I re- he went, he burst through a neighbour's hedge and pulled like a, you know, like a sun lounger, those foldable sun lounger <laughs> covers. He pulled that out and then he managed to get it sort of folded almost into a like kind of an N shape, but flattened it and he got on top of that and pumped that. Uh, it was really inventive when he needed to be. Yeah, all sorts of cushions. <laughs> Sofas, and but never another dog. Never another dog. Quite sad. Maybe he just yeah. wasn't into dogs. Yeah. Although actually, once when he was being dog sat by someone else, they sent some pictures of him trying to mount a Labrador in the uh, Sheffield Park. Pictures. Uh, I have got them somewhere. But he, <laughs> but he was, he was trying to get it in the neck rather than he wasn't round the back. Uh. He, he was at the wrong end. But uh, and slightly sideways. That was as near as he ever got. That was it. Aww. Yeah, he was happy. Yeah. The thing is, though, some humans don't fuck humans. Do you know what I mean? Some humans either just sort themselves out or they're into bestiality. They fuck animals. Maybe your dog was just like what? a beat. Are they the, the only two? two? Options? <laughs> Celibacy or shag dogs? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, run just like cushions. <laughs> Give me another one. What percentage of adults reckon divergence? Ooh, 30. 30%. Do you reckon? 20? 30? I reckon that's that's less way than too 10%. high. Percent. It's way too high, yeah. Okay. Because one in every like... five people, that means there's two virgins in here. There's yeah, only Finn. Because, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, in like, in third world but countries, show all they do is fuck, isn't it? Yeah, I went too high. I, I think thinking... it's like 8%. So that's it to a David Attenborough, Carl. <laughs> um, <laughs> 0.3%. Yeah. Wow, that where sounds you, about right. Where have you pulled that? How do you find out? Do you just know all this stuff? Yeah, I'm just using my brain. <laughs> <laughs> Most people just like do whatever they can to fuck. Do you know what yeah, I mean? but also in that not three percent, there's got to be there's people lying, isn't there? Like you know, sometimes people lie about when they first did it, not pointing any fingers. Um, or no, I'm, I'm, I believe in you, being silly. But then people always. There's, there would be, you know, like there was someone at school who always lied that they'd done everything that they hadn't yeah. done. And that, that's that been for time evermore, isn't it? There'll be hardcore virgins who lie that they've done it when they're still a virgin. Like yeah. that, that, that proclivity of humanity yeah. must. That's I think there's 29.7% liars. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Get I'm it up there. constantly doing it. Oh, I'm Some trying. people lie about how they did it or how they tried to do it. Some people, yeah. you know, I know people who've like tucked their pants off in bars and tried to fuck women in booths and stuff. You know, like in, in Tenerife, the pub. in a Dubliner with yeah. a Scottish woman called Ashley. Yeah. What a random. I went on some very different holidays. What a random story. <laughs> that was I saw much stay in Tenerife. Last week, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Poor old Stay. No, he, he, he did his, it. He got his lipstick out and just. Is she coming to Glasgow at the weekend, Steve? Oh, that would be... Get it on stage. <laughs> Steve can't shag it up. <laughs> what have you been up to, Rob? I haven't seen you for ages. What have you been doing? Well, I've not seen either of you since uh, pre, you know, pre the national cough of mm-hmm. 2019. So since then, what have I done? Um, I've built a, a house in the garden <laughs> for my mother-in-law, Jean. That's how right on a comedian I am, you know. Gotta used to be some, oh, gotta be a song. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Everyone used to do jokes about the mother-in-law. I, I built mine a forever home in the in the garden. Um, Gene uh, the Bean. Yeah, Gene the Is Bean. Is it like a proper house, or have you just like bought a shed and put no, it's, it in there? It, it's, 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 it's a single. Well, it's like a single floor. It's a single story, like a, it's like a giant mega shed, but not a shed. So timber frame, timber clad. Building like fully insulated. And... He's got one, but he wanks in it. <coughs> it's like Dan's wanking shed, but bigger. <laughs> I think Ishan wanks in it more than I do. Oh, um, it's a granny. You... It's a granny flat. It's a granny flat. Yeah, so it's, not, yeah, so it's yeah. like you've got a big open plan living room, a bedroom, and a bathroom. Has she got Wi-Fi? She's got Wi-Fi. Yeah, yeah. Fucking hell, Toggling off the house. Yeah. And is great. that is that the first thing, or were you always into like your DIY and stuff? Well, I've, I sort of I've got into it recent years. When we moved to our house about ten years ago, I wanted to turn the garage into like a kind of 
a creative, crazy room. And I, uh, I learned how to insulate and probably in the way that you guys have done building this. No. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, did, we this, did this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, cool, yeah cool, we cool, all cool. did this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've, I've seen the blueprints. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, and, and talking to people like Binty from Hot Water and you oh, talk yeah. to people and my mate Tom Rigglesworth, who's absolutely, you know, like granular level obsessed with details and stuff. <laughs> and you learn how to, to, to do stuff. And that, so I started by insulating that. And then Tom Rigglesworth is definitely brilliant at DIY. Oh, he's amazing. Because he's also fucking brilliant at comedy. But you could tell, there was a period when he was renovating a house where you could tell as he got to a gig, the literally last thing he did before he picked up keys was put like a paintbrush down or, That's right, yeah. or stop yeah. knocking through a wall. He'd turn yeah, up with been, a jumper been with fucking yeah. brick dust on it yeah. and then still be the best act on the bill. So good. Yeah, he's amazing. I mean, I, I did find like when, when because I didn't get to do it, I wanted to do it right in the middle of lockdown, but planning and all that kind of shenanigans, it kicked on a bit into like when we opened up again. But I did find going to do a gig after a day's worth of building and you've been solving three-dimensional problems all day, like then actually choosing what words to say when you're telling a story or whatever was just, everything's running, like completely flowing. And and and, and this fella, Pete, I've got to give Pete Jackson, Sheffield Builder, if you have to have a builder in Sheffield, a, a shout out because he came round and- He also and he filmed just, King Kong, by the way, so. Oh, he's a yeah, he's, he's, King Kong as well. Yeah, he, he is he's a not doing films now. man. He is really he, is. He's, doing, <laughs> he's doing granny flats in South Yorkshire. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the film. And CGI. You do everything. Lord of the Rings. Granny Flats. And, uh, I remember we, we, he built for us for a couple of uh, things on, on the house. And I remember asking him, you know, sometimes when, you, when you've got a builder and you panic when you don't know and you think, oh, if I ask them, they're going to say, oh, it's going to be expensive. Or you know, it'll cost you that. We just ask Pete somebody go, oh, we could do out. And you think, you don't usually hear that from a builder. And then, and then I was having his coffee. And he picked up this Rubik's Cube with my kids at the time. And like, in about a minute, he just solved it while he was telling us what he was going to do and put it down. And I thought, I, I'm in. This guy's great. And then when I wanted to build the annex, I called him and he just came around and sat with me for four hours and literally showed me like from the ground up how to do it. And then just kind of built to that plan. And 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 it was genuinely one of the the, the best things I think I've ever done with my life, building a house from nothing. Like dug the, got a digger, dug the foundations, got the concrete poured and then just built this thing up from that. I uh, I know the feeling because watching someone else build my garden office was one of the best things I've ever done <laughs> yeah, in my life yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah watching great. my extension now, I'm like, that's good, that boys. Do you, do you have the urge to build a house though? That's quite like, you know, if you talk about the ambitions and things you want to do in your life, buying a bit of land and then choosing what it looks like Pla and then building planning it. Planning it, yeah. But physically doing any labor, no. I am useless. Okay, so take away the labour. Would you want to build your own house? Because yeah. that's obviously... Like grand design shit? Yeah. Totally, yeah. Yeah. Would I want to tell someone to build me the exact house that I want? Absolutely. <laughs> Do I want to build my own house? No. I, I won't even hammer one nail in. No. And I'd like to get involved to say that I did it. Because like, if I put up the first bit of paint on the wall, I built the house. You know what I mean? <laughs> that, I mean, I've, having built a little one, I'd, I'd answer It must feel question. incredible. I just well, don't it, have it's the like, it, The best thing I've ever done, but I don't think I... I'd want to build my own. Like I could cross that off the list as going, I've had a really good look at it. I really enjoyed it. It gave me a great sense of achievement, but I'm not asked. About... I feel the same about going it's to the like... Vatican. Like I've been, I've done it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I don't need to go and see any other churches. Yeah, you've seen the church now. Yeah. Number one. Yeah. If my girlfriend ever tries to take me to a church ever again, we've seen the church. We've seen the main one. He's right. You don't, you don't see two churches. You don't build two houses. Just do everything once. Solid. <laughs> Just tick things off until you don't need to do anything anymore. That's yeah. kind of what yeah. Adam Rose, 56, he stopped doing stuff. He's, yeah. he's done the best <laughs> version of everything. <laughs> That's it. Isn't that what life is, though? Yeah. No. Ticking stuff off? No. Ticking stuff off? Well, and then not doing anything any similar. Like, no. no, that's not what life is. It's to get in different experiences, isn't it? Yeah. But it would be weird if you just had a really busy first 50 years and went, no point me doing fucking anything here. I've done everything dead well. <laughs> Look at that list. Ticked off. Would you go back to the Vatican if you've been once? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. I don't, it doesn't appeal. Was it a big massively. deal for you to go to the Vatican? Me? Oh, he's very religious. Uh, no. I, uh, I, I did a, the full three-hour tour with uh, a standing... Uh, tour guide because right. the, the main guy didn't was... even get the Pope no and she uh, <laughs> the Pope. they've expanded too fast the Vatican yeah, yeah, haven't they totally. yeah. I was only slightly less interested than her 
Bec- and she couldn't give a fuck about this place. <laughs> I'll go back to Vatican when they do it up. You know what I mean? When they finish it. When they when they change some stuff, new paintings. Yeah, there's like a Starbucks or something. Well, there. me and Rigglesworth are currently uh, tendering for the contract. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully we'll be able to get you in. Well, we'll do a proper tour. You know what I mean? <laughs> The Pope's mother-in-law wants a fucking <laughs> shed. So me and Rigglesworth, uh, no. Tom Rigglesworth late for his gig in Rochdale. <laughs> yeah, he is driving from the Vatican, though. <laughs> Probably should have taken two things on oh, at the same oh, time. Oh, I'm sorry, I've turned, remiss me, I've turned up covered in purple dust. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. a great Rigglesworth. He's, because um, uh, me and Tom do a podcast now as well. If I can plug it. Oh, we do. Uh, yeah. It's called the Unlikely Weightlifters Podcast. <laughs> And we started doing it because I knew I was going to build this thing for Jean and I've got a bit of a glass back. And Tom had just had twins and um, he took, um, in his own words, I took an online uh, BMI medical test and it turned out I was, I was medically emaciated. So he took it upon himself to put on 20 kilos before Christmas just so he didn't... This year it, or last year? Oh, I, this was like, this was during the... First big lockdown, I think it was, because he, he was so skinny. On? He was like an extra from Tenko, like proper Tenko thin, and uh, and he was always getting injured and getting. If laid you need up. to picture uh, Tom Riggles with Sideshow Bob, like a, yeah, Sideshow Bob, like he's got a real Where's Wally vibe to him, hasn't he? Like he's just, he was just a tall, skinny man. Big yeah. He's six five, isn't he, Tom? He still looks really slim, and and, and uh, but he's he's so much stronger than he was, and and you know, he, he still looks like. Um, He's got a, what I love about Tom. So many things about him. He's really funny. His attention to detail. Like when I see him walking up the drive to come and do the, the weightlifting, he's always inspecting, you know, what's going on, the gravel or something to do with the, the roof or something like a, like, um, like a heron. Do you know what I mean? Like a really <laughs> intrigued like... heron from the council coming to so check have everything. have you been doing weights? Yeah. Have yeah. you actually... I was, so we, we were do, taking we the piss before... Yeah. He'd be one of my first picks for a weightlifting partner. So that's me Just and Tom. so I yeah. can see that happen. It's so much fun. And, and in lockdown, weights got really, really expensive when we decided we were going to start doing it. So we're obviously undeterred. And with Riggles or Thin Your Corner, we just started making our own, like out of concrete, bags of postscript, about £3.50. And because weights got up to like, like a 10 kilo plate could be like 50, 60 quid. So we just started making them in buckets. And uh, so when we did the podcast... <laughs> It's the, the most pop- Yorkshire thing it's I've ever heard. You don't need to pay this price. No, yeah. give me some concrete <laughs> and a bucket. I'll sort it. So we started, it. we like, uh, we, the one of his weights is five kilo and we cast in Haribo tubs. We just, like you like literally fill him with all, uh, wipe around with oil like you're making a cake. <laughs> Pour the concrete in, a little bit of drain pipe in the middle, like for to put the bar through and you're away and they're still going strong. It's incredible. <laughs> And and and, it, and then we, then I built like a weightlifting rack in the garage, uh, which now sort of it folds flat and it kind of pegs into the ceiling and the floor and stuff, and uh, so we don't have to go with Jim. It's just there. And Tom uh, Tom's garden is like one in one hill in Sheffield overlooking like the valley, and it lo- looks like he's built Sheffield's only legal crucifixion site. It's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> so we do. So we do. I do a weightlift there, and he does. A way at my house. Imagine if there was like a tsunami or like a natural disaster now and someone found those as like relics in like five yeah. years. They'd think they're thousands of years old. Yeah. <laughs> Concrete weights. That's mad. Yeah, it's, it's it clever was, though. It, I mean, it's, it's dead eating. And it was like, yeah, about £3.50, a, a massive, you know, like 25 kilo weight. It's crazy. And then we, then, we, then we weighed them on weighing scales and got an exact weight of them. And then some of them we sanded down a bit and other ones we stuck a few little kind of Cooking weights on too. <laughs> then we, then we, so we had our own gym, like, and then out of nowhere, and then, and then basically the podcast contains, I'd say, trace elements at best of weightlifting, one or two percent. <laughs> yeah. So it's basic because you, you, what we do is like we do like they're called compound extra. So it's a squat, bench press, and a deadlift. And at sort of our age of life, it's the best thing you can do for your health and strength and fitness without like you know loads of impact on your joints and shit. And and it just makes you it makes your whole body like kind of wake up and regenerate itself. Do you feel good? I feel great. Yeah, I feel healthier than I've ever been. Apart from I've got arthritis in my foot, and I have an operation in July to have that chopped out. But um, and then I have the bone fused. Ugh, it's all a bit grim. Did but, you um, did you ride your motorcycle here? Yeah, I think you might be one of the first. Have we had a we have, have we had a proper motorbike you're, ride you're to the gig? The first, uh, really? Uh, yeah, Louis yeah. Sogola was the only other one. Oh, yeah, he's Kawasaki. <laughs> he showed us as well, didn't he? I picked him up and had the conversation in the car with him, actually. Um, 
I think that's pretty cool as well. What, biking? Yeah, I'm scared of that shit. I wouldn't do it. I what? didn't do it till I was 30. That's when I first, I remember I was doing a couple of warm ups in London. Maybe I can't remember when, how long, it, but, and I got a taxi bike between two studios on the back of this Virgin taxi bike. And I, and I just remember thinking, oh, that was good. And like, just, just move, perpetual motion. That's what it is without, you don't have to go that fast to always be moving. And um, and I started doing it and then it sort of revamped the way I saw living in London at the time. And just like, you link everything up because you're over land. And uh, yeah, and it just, I just, I love it. You get on at sat where you live, you park up where you're going. What's your, what's your ride? What is it? It's a, it's a, what is it? Honda Africa Twin at the moment. Dan? It's a good one, isn't it? I love the Honda Africa Twin. But it's a, it's a real, it's a proper Sounds like, like porn, that, doesn't it? It's a proper kind of old man's like uh, adventure bike. Like it's tall. It's, it's like sitting on a horse. We're it's very renewable. It can, I, can you turn the telly on so we can see it? Um, I, you know what? I love the idea of riding motorbikes, right? Uh, you've turned the telly off again. Uh, oh, it's back on. There you go. Um, I love the idea of riding motorbikes. When I, for the first like 89 years of doing comedy, I didn't drive. Yeah. And occasionally I'd have to like ask for a lift. And a, a mate of mine called Mosey Josh, he used to text me and say, I'll give you the lift <laughs> from, uh, whenever, from like to wherever you're going. Um, and he had a motorbike. And I always used to say no, because he'd mm. be offering to drive me to like Nottingham in the rain on a motorbike. And I didn't want to be sat on the back of a bike. For yeah, it. that is horrific. Yeah. yeah. Um, but... I'd love to do it. Do you not get scared? Because, like, if I crash my car, yeah. you know, um, first of all, I get very hungry. Uh, and if I crash my <laughs> car, I think I'm going to survive most of the time. Yeah. If you crash that, mm, you're does. done, aren't you? I mean, it depends how you crash, but, I mean, the, the, the yeah, the... Is that like terrifying? Is, yes. Well, I suppose what it what it is, is... It's everything in life is a trade-off, isn't it? Between, and when I'm on it, I, there's no radio on. So I, it's it's great. I, re, I had a period of about a month, last month, where I was doing gigs all the time on the bike and I realised that I'd not listened to any news once. I'd not, you know, if you've got the radio on, it's impossible to avoid the news and, and there's just the shit that gets in your head, yeah. which is a relentless slew of negativity. Yeah. It's like without going into it, because it's all libelous, what's happening at the point when we're recording this and there's a BBC presenter suspended, blah, blah, blah. All that's happening, understandably, as a BBC are investigating it. But there's also loads of other dreadful shit going on that the news isn't covering because it's having to cover that. And and there's lo and it just, it's, it's, it's never ending. But on the bike, there's none of it. Like you, you have to be completely in the moment. And a bit like building, I arrive at a gig and I've been, uh, my brain's already running. That's how I... Look at it. I, I might well be justifying something that's incredibly stupid to myself because because I like the feeling of it, but I feel a bit like a dog with its head out the window all the time. I do know <laughs> what you mean. Like I, I'm really addicted to my phone, and I I struggle a lot to not go on it oh, at any hard. point. Yeah. Um. I haven't actually told these yet, but recently I started playing golf. Did and you? when yeah, and oh, when uh, oh, when shit. I play golf, That's I leave my phone in my bag. Yeah, and for the like four hours I'm playing, I just don't look at it, and I always feel great at the end of it. Genuinely, do you feel a difference in your mental health just for having that switched off? Absolutely. Mm. But then the second I finish playing, I'm on it immediately again. Well, um, our our lad Len, who's 15, such a lovely boy, and we sort of. He, he was always very interested in phones. I can't believe he's 15. He's nuts, isn't it? It's when crazy. Was I at your, when was I at your... It's 10 years ago. Shit, yeah, of course Yeah, because he came and did the one o'clock club that Helen was running, didn't you? Which was the mother and babies. Oh, God. Uh, afternoon club that she did. It was brilliant. I know it's that. mental when you've got mates in comedy and they're like, oh, yeah, my kid's 15 now. Yeah, like, it's crazy. That's how time works. Well, I mean, and, and, and it's amazing, like, the because I, I run some local uh, comedy clubs called the Comedy Village in the Peak District, and we had Nick Helm up last week. And uh, and he wanted a live backing band. So me and my 15-year-old lad with a backing band for him. Len plays the drums. He's amazing. Uh, side note, can I come and do those gigs again? Because they're the nicest well, I'd gigs love, ever. I'd love both of you to come and do they're them. They're so yeah, fucking lovely. They're really good fun. I, I love running gigs. I like, we just started, it's been about three or four years we've been doing them in village halls on weeknights. And it's just, it's like everyone just walks there, has a couple of tins, I put two great acts on, they have a riot. And then everyone just walks home. It feels like gigging where Postman Pat's set. 
Yeah. It's got that feel of like, <laughs> it's just otherworldly, you know chilled out countryside. Do you know the butcher? Uh, they know me. Yeah, and I know them as well. Yeah, yeah. I know the butcher. And uh, it's almost, it's it's a bit like living on Market Street in Morrison's. You know, when you go down Market Street <laughs> and you wave at the butcher and you wave at the baker. See, they rarely such, wave back now, actually. They're, that is like such a, a way of life for some people. But I know the reason he asked that is village life is... A, pho a genuine phobia of cars. Yeah, mm. like he's a, a city people. boy. Yeah, but like the I, the reason he has to, you know, the butcher. A very common thing <laughs> in his head is if he ever lives in a place where he knows the butcher and the butcher knows him, he runs away. He's yeah. gonna blow his own head off. Yeah. <laughs> What's the fear car? Let's unbox it. Because uh, there's nothing to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, I get when you get when you get a bit old. Come to the comedy village, Carl. You love it. Uh, Carl, you, Carl, you just you just make weights out of concrete. Uh, yeah, there's no gyms. I, I'm just as I'm said, I'm a city boy. I just like to be able to, even if I don't do them, I like to have the possibility to. You want to know? Yeah, there's, you could go to the cinema like well, in year five. Yes. I want to get like I want to be. I want it to be ten past two in the morning, <laughs> and I want to go and get snacks. Not oh, the Tesco opens on Tuesday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blow my head off. Well, we've. Got, we're in a sweet spot where we've got a 24 hour garage. No, that's so long. I want to I ask the bigger than like fucking <laughs> area 51, like two minutes from my house, and I have, I've got two of them. It is mad. Like, we, we, when I first went in for, um, I had a routine about it, I do, still do it occasionally, but I had a routine about going into our local GPs for my prostate check. Ooh, it's like and, I love um, that Yeah, get, and getting the letter and going, uh, dear Mr. House, please come on Monday morning for your prostate exam. It's going to be carried out by, oh God, that's Andy from Fiverside, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that's Andy. That that's three doors down. I could literally oh. stick my ass over the garden fence and I could <laughs> lean out of his greenhouse and have a rummage while he's doing his tomatoes. Did you get fingered by a man you play footy with? Uh, pretty much. <laughs> I had one. It's, it's weird, and since that, like, but there's, it's weird, like, because I think I like you, Carl, because I'd lived in London for the whole of my professional yeah, yeah. life, but grew up sort of in this in the area I'm kind of in now, ish. So everything I got used to that thing of the, everything available in the city, and I, I had massive hang-ups about suddenly everyone knowing my business yeah, and the yeah, lack of, of anonymity, yeah. and it and and, and that, that bum exam was was. Pretty much, that was a that was a portal. <laughs> yeah. I went through there into a, into a new new reality of, of <laughs> going. Okay, yeah, we've we've, we've all got bum holes, and and uh, every now and then, the Sweet. fellow from Fiverside is going to look at it. <laughs> and it, it, it's it's very odd. But I and I had a, and I think it's it's changed my boundaries. I had um, I had a. Uh, <laughs> I can be fingered by anyone now. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Here's the postman. <laughs> <laughs> but similarly, like in terms of running the local gigs, I thought I don't want to shit where I eat. I'm terrified of that. Like, <clears throat> like just how how can you? Because on stage, you just want to get loose, don't you? You want to get yeah. loose. You want to be absolutely mindless, utterly in the moment, and just kind of let it all out. And I thought I can't do. And I get, get getting badgered by the primary school to do a fundraiser, and then eventually, like you kind of go. I haven't got enough books because of the fucking state of the world. Let's do it and put it on. Tickets sold out, like 100 tickets in an hour. And then everyone's there and I'm suddenly on stage and I'm in front of everyone that's pick Your up neighbors. and drop off. So I thought this can either go one or two ways. I can either button in or I can just absolutely let it all out, which is what I chose to do. And at the end of it, like kind of, well, we've, we've all done that and... Um, See you tomorrow morning, and and it was, but it was liberating. That's what it yeah. was, and then that feeling of thinking, like if you're, you know, like if you are the butcher, you sell the meat. If you're the the blacksmith, you put horses shoes on. If you're the village clown, you run the gig, and then and then actually realizing that you run it, and people go, we like it, so we're going to come. Yeah, that's cool. And 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 that that that's that's really that's quite grounding. Really. That's your like role in the community. Yeah, and it makes and it makes me write as well. Like kind of three gigs a month, you just write, 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 write. And I've done all sorts of stuff in front of them. I've done this. Um, we had Ed Byrne recently, and I brought him on at both gigs with this uh, twelve about fifteen foot wide Angel of the North costume I've built. <laughs> so I come on as the Angel of the North. It's big cardboard <laughs> costume, just. Just musing about, you know, <laughs> welcoming people in the north and stuff. And, you know, 
<laughs> a lot of people think I'm rusting, but it's not. It's the, it's the finish on the steel. It's like <laughs> core 10 steel. So it's like, it's, oh, well, if I'd had my way, I'd have been galvanised. You know? but, uh, <laughs> but nobody, and so, you, and so you can do anything. Like we had Nick Elm last month, you know, just screaming at them and playing like loud music. And we've had... Spencer Jones, we've had we've had Dan, we've had. All I think sorts I did of one people. of the first ones, you know. Yeah, you did a preview, didn't you? I think well? I I think I did one of the the you first did, you ones because one you were didn't you? you were still working out the how to do it. You uh, fucking know it, everyone. You, you I, compared the one in Hadesage. You, yeah. Were you even on that night? No, I I because I didn't know it was going to work technically, so I set it up and ran it, and you compared. It. I bought you to compare, it, didn't I? Yeah, because you I, were like, at that uh, point, still, still don't felt know. Like I can't drop my kicks in front of everyone. Yeah. And uh, Dan stepped in and did it and nailed it. It was great fun. That was it, because I remember you did it. There was an auction, wasn't it? Because we were raising money for something. And someone said it was something to do with rab climbing gear. And they were shouting, it, it's a rab top. And you were going, I remember you going, you can shout it as many times as you want. It don't make any more sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck no. I know what you're on about. They so love it, a hike. Do they, do they know you as the comedian then? Or like, are you the comedian? So, yeah, I suppose they do. But but almost in the way that, that it's just... It, uh, it's just normal. Yeah, yeah. So so they still talk to me as me, but if I put something on, they go, right, and we know it's going to be good. We'll good. come along yeah. and see it. And that's... That's cool. That's really nice. And and, you, and and it feels like... It's like what you're doing here. Like, if 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 the world isn't what you want it to be, you make your corner of it what you'd like it to be and what, what you want to do. You, if you can think about it and you can... It's about realising what, what your ideas are, isn't it? And that's what the whole creative... Thing is for isn't it like look at what you've done here it's, it's absolutely it blows my mind it's incredible but you've built it from from nothing from nothing nothing from but, you know, but that's nothing. the thing like and so if you put stuff on and people like it as you know yourselves that like, they keep coming back and 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 that's and life creative life it, uh, it's about getting out of your own way isn't it and letting letting it out letting it through and yeah i think a lot more people just sort of take control and do what they want to do now yeah didn't used to feel like that yeah, totally felt like there was gatekeepers everywhere, Where, and especially I think I think a lot of comics in the north felt that a lot, you know, just lot who who would be overlooked by essentially a London centric industry. And you look at how big someone like you know Paul Smith's got as a live stand up. It's wild, isn't it? And the TV industry haven't got a fucking clue what's happened there because they haven't had a sniff of him. They're trying to get. He's not sniff. needing him. Of More of power. So, it's brilliant, yeah. It's uh, just before we go to the break, yeah. your podcast is called... It's called the Unlikely Weightlifters Podcast, and it comes out every week wherever you get your podcast. Uh, diarrhea uh, permitting. Because well, Sam's got two small uh, t um, uh, toddlers. So I'd say one in four, you know, we, we have to postpone for various illnesses. <laughs> Not always diarrhea. Um, or, you know, or, or someone twangs her back, or, you know, life gets in the way. But yeah, we put them up on there and... Um, we, we, we've currently got a really big thing, actually. You guys could help us out, the, the, the global reach of this podcast. We're current, me and Tom realised one day when we were chatting in between um, in rest periods that we both source our underpants from the pant cages at TK Maxx. <laughs> now, I don't know where uh, the guys in this room get your pants from or what's your the, listeners. What's the pant cage? You've never seen the pant cage in yeah. TK Maxx? Have you the, been into the little boxes Max? of like Alessi underpants and Calvin Klein's? Yeah. And yeah. This is Alessi, two men showing their age JCB. for a room full of younger men. Seriously, guys, <laughs> get on it. Now, if you you want to get best, you have top quality pants at rock bottom prices. <laughs> <laughs> Do you fucking work there? Yeah. Get along to TK Maxx. But the retail system, at first, it's quite boggling because they essentially build these kind of cages. They look like IKEA shelves on their backs sometimes augmented with a, a second or third tier, maybe for the Alessi pants or something with, by Christian Ra <laughs> Cristiano Ronaldo. Um, and so what we do is Call me and Tom Ronaldo. have been sending each other video blogs of uh, our reports from the pant cages at TK Maxx, <laughs> specifically looking at percentage of boxes opened. Oh, now that's always time loads. dependent. Aren't they all yeah. small? No, 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 no. It really, Carl, Carl, you've really got to look at the data. It depends where you're looking, what time of day, okay? okay. You've got to have your wits about you. Um, so sharpen up, Carl, please, for <laughs> Christ's sake. Um, and and we're, looking, we're looking for percentage open. We're looking for the general vibe, where the pant cage is situated in the store. How many security tags? Um, are there any pants uh, made by the British designer? 
Jeff Banks. <laughs> uh, because there's not <laughs> many time. there's not many Jeff Banks pants, but they, he does he does two sets of boxer briefs. Um, and, and, we, and we've had, li- and the listeners got really involved with it, started sending their own videos and audio <laughs> missives in. Uh, so we you get one from me. Tell you what, right now. If you could do, yeah, where's, it, where's your nearest TK? It's about 100 far. yards oh, yeah, away. Sweet, far. we should do it on the way out. <laughs> it's incredible, what's it's incredible. Your, what's your favourite pant? Well, I'm currently wearing um, a brand, I do get from TK Maxx, they're called Dare to Wear. <laughs> <laughs> and they are... <laughs> They're, 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 they're actually made by the sock shop um, organisation. And I tell you, they have forgotten more about wicking underpants than most of us will ever understand. And they're made of a bamboo fabric. And they, these are wicking moisture away from me as we speak. Do you ever have any pandas trying to eat your undies? <laughs> Do you know, I, I, I cautiously didn't stop it at Nosey Safari Park on the way here. <laughs> Just in case I got nibbled. But can yeah, you ta- but, but basically... Pardon? Can you take us there and just show us? Your... Oh, yeah, I'd love to take you to the pancake. It's literally across the road. Yeah, but it would be an absolute honour. Okay. And uh, if you guys could, what and are you, you know, what are you rocking? Oh, and we get to, you what you know got me, on? mate. I'm what you wearing got on, Clients that are two sizes too small. Oh, she. My... Uh, Jack's Christmas present still. No, these are actually my ones. My, all my Calvin's in the wash. I've got H and M Plain Boys on. Yeah, pull and bear. These ones. I got some Nike. Pull and bear. Nike's oh, lovely. They I've could. They, you can get them from TKs from the pancages. They're very comfortable. Oh, yeah, lovely. Can yeah. Get me stomach in these ones. Oh yeah, oh, those are lovely. Yes. yes. You're yeah. looking good, mate. You don't need to lose anything. It's a lovely high waisted pant. You don't need to lose weight. You just need to pull your boxes higher. We'll all buy a pant over there. It's like a compression brief. You I'm wearing, telling you right now, I'm getting some Alessi knickers over there. Yeah. Definitely. Cristiano Ronaldo's got his own brand out and he sells them in five packs. Go on, Ronaldo. Can't get them in the States, though. Yeah. No. yeah. But no. yeah, so we're building up a picture <laughs> of the state of the pant cages. It's called Pant Cage UK and it's spiralled <laughs> out of control. Why? Why? Why did you add the UK? Why? Well, well, we're looking mainly at the UK. Well, it's great. We're going to Britain. franchise it to the rest oh, of the right, world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. The South of France. Smart, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the yeah. office. But yeah, we're open <laughs> to global, global. Uh, yeah, so we can go Pancage Euro, <laughs> Pancage Global, if you guys can get on the back of it. And if, <laughs> so basically, listeners, uh, we're looking, you know, a couple of minutes, an audio or a video missive sent into um, Rob's Comedy Village at gmail.com <laughs> from your local pant cage. We're looking for percentage opened, whereabouts in the store the pant cage is situated. Um, level of security tags. Are there any pants by Jeff Banks? And the general vibe of the pant cage. All right, we'll go in. Okay. <laughs> pant cage UK sounds like a really low rent sort of mixed martial arts yeah. competition, doesn't it? Yeah. It sounds <laughs> hey, like look, a ladies look, one. That's a bit If naughty. that gets people on board, they're welcome. <laughs> they're welcome. Yeah. All right, let's have a break. <laughs> this section has been sponsored by TK Maxx. And pant cage UK. Yeah. We're going to go and see what the situation is with the pant cage. One of the crown jewels of uh, TK Maxx's in the country. Yeah, one of, TK Maxx I'd say one of the yeah. premier pant retailers uh, in the Northwest, without a doubt. And that's uh, there's some pretty big high street dick swingers in that category. So let's go inside. Buy some pants. Three tiers on it. It's a pyramid, classic pyramid, a single unit there. Um, oh yeah, all the major. This looks like a wedding cake of a. It this is. is a hell of a system. One of the ways they like to eat there. Uh, well, a three tier. Wearing a lanyard, that lady was just passing me. Oh, we've got a Jeff Bank. Thank you, Carl. Nice to see. It's a Jeff Bank. Some Walfords. Steve's got his own pant That's range. A brand we've not seen before, the Walfords. Um, so we've got. Uh, yeah, all the major. Adam, I found yours. I actually do need some of this. Some uh, cheetah skin monies. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Now some those, che- we tend to find XXL. the money. The money pants have often been opened. Oh yeah, of course they have. Yeah, you want to see the, you want to see the yeah, pattern. Yeah. And it's XXL to do it with Adam's dick. It's the first time we mentioned penises um, on <laughs> Bank Age UK. But, uh, we are on the Have a Word podcast as well. It's a simultaneous broadcast. The crossover. So it will get a little bit blue. <laughs> There we go. Have they been opened, the They've been opened already. Um, security tags on every pair of pants, but that appears to be the case in some white. Just a good piece. If I can't find a Lessie's... Yes! Yes, for the win! Come on, lads. Oh, hello. 
what are you after there? Down a medium or a large? I'm after a, I'm after a large. I'm after a large. It's, been a, it's been a long winner. Ted Baker. Nice. What have you got? There we go. Then? Plenty of bamboo. I tell you, if you go bamboo, you will not look back, Dan. Uh, Tokyo Laundry. Green Street, there will be Branton in. Briefly. Right. I really want some of the leopard skin monies. Yeah. Of course I do, but I can't wear XXL just for the, the, the leopard skin. Mm. Size is Wait. usually an issue in the pan cage of it. Well, exactly, there's no point getting a pair of pants unless they're practical, Dan. It's very important. What would you say about the general vibe, Carl? How do you feel it is? Calm, isn't it? I think those might be a sleeping short, Carl. <laughs> so, it's not my first rodeo. He's out of the cage. Oh, Carl's gone rogue, he's out of the I'm cage. I'm off the game. I don't know what a sleeping pants is or a sleeping rogue. Get myself some fatter pants. Yeah. So the Rabob noticed the most open are the penguins. Yeah. Is that a, is that a common yeah. theme? Well, <laughs> it's not because they're using their beak. So they will <laughs> tend to damage the, the boxes slightly. They'll get reboxed by top management, don't worry. And then it'll be uh, retailed on. Some classic brands, quick Quicksilver, Quicksilver Pringle, of course. Pringle, of course. I've never seen the spider. Yeah. And you can actually touch the cotton before you buy yeah, it. You, exactly, that's to prevent people smashing into the boxes. It's a really, really good strategy. Clever. JCB, of course. Trucks and pants, heavy duty. <laughs> um, what else we got? Uh, oh, that's the first time I've seen uh, Jeff Banks up at the top on a, on a, on a top. So Jeff's actually occupying two floors of retail space there. So Is this a common thing? The lead yeah. to have no viewing window? You can't see the pants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this not asking people to break it? Are you going to buy blind? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so asking for breakage. I think right? it's asking too much of a consumer. Uh, I think that's really good. Quick question. Feed all that back to the Lee brand. Is health. it frowned upon to try them on in store? I think if you go and ask for permission. In No, I'm just going to whip them on right now. How common that is That would be unusual. It'd be an unusual. Uh, great rules here, mate. Yeah. How common that. is the tube? It, it feels like it's a new thing, Carl. Whether it's going to stick around, I don't know. Quite it could easy just be a fad. Too. Could yeah. just be a fad, retailing pants in tubes. I mean, whatever next. Um, but yeah, I'd say on the whole, quite calm. I'd say about 35, 40% already open. Yep. Say, Carl. Yep. All the major brands represented. Basement location, quite near bags and caps, quite near socks and bags as well. So you expect yeah. excess leaves. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you're coming from the floor up. Yeah. I'm just letting you know that I'm going for a, an open pack of medium monies. Lovely. Um, there isn't the right boxer short in my size, so I'm going to go aspirational money. I like it because I'm going to. Well, that's a good point. Could ask that a point of uh, oh, wow. point oh, of yeah. purchase. That's very you, that. Yeah. <laughs> so what's expensive thing in here? I think, I think that's a good plan for you, Dan. And the fact they've been open, that means they've already been quality checked. Yeah. I've already been quality checked by one of our independent ombudsmen. <laughs> ombudsmen. 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 Ombudsmen.
in the t-shirts. I mean, it's, I'd describe TK Maxx as a, a high-energy, multicolored jumble sale. It's incredible, isn't it? Yeah. Where else can you buy five kilos of bath salts and some pants? <laughs> Incredible, isn't it? Got some bags. See how, see how he's going to get on here. Oh, it's a hell of a queue. I think there's a sale on the high end. Isn't it? I've already lost energy. I don't know what to do now because he's, uh, he's going to be waiting at least 25 minutes for this queue. Mind you, the, uh, in terms of the, the guys and girls on the till, it's not their first rodeo either. They'll be processing these uh, processing these uh, customers as fast as possible. I'm just going to get myself out of the way now. I feel like I'm in the, in the way of the purchasing. Just retreated. I've, I've just realised the retreated to the bra section. That doesn't look good either. What are they? What are they currently asking? Twelve ninety nine, but that is down from an RRP of twenty four ninety nine. Yes, they've already dropped a lot. Ooh, your first. Always twenty five pence off. No, I'm going to ask for twenty five pence. Oh wow! And then it's a real maverick strike. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've got nick them. Q's moving it. It's quite giddy, isn't it? And this is where this is where you could get yourself some magnesium bath salt stamp. Shame to miss out on those. Correct my answer, Isis, ladies. Some for Laura there in a nice presentation jar. Everyone okay for neck pillows? Oh, coffee syrups. Number one. Hello, mate. Um, is there any discount code for boxers open? None. Oh. Just don't, don't give it a pass. Yeah. Didn't go well, Rob. It didn't go well. It's pretty firm. It's already down from twenty four ninety nine. I mean, what more can they do? Thanks very much, mate. Hi, uh, I'm Rob Rouse. This is Pancage UK. This is where we're trying to build up a picture of the state of the Pancages in TK Maxx across the whole of the British Isles, possibly Europe, and indeed the Americas uh, and the world. Dan uh, Nightingale here from Have A Word Podcast. Hello. This is a simultaneous podcast one between the Unlikely Weightlifters podcast and the Have A Word Podcast. Dan has purchased three pack of money pants in neon, neon leopard print. Um, in the wrong size. Already reduced from 25 quid down to 12.99. Pretty firm on the discount for the open box. Yeah. It was a flat no, and I need to work on my haggling technique because I instantly accepted it. I you went, buckled, didn't you? I'm sorry, sir. Yeah, but I mean, it wasn't it wasn't his first haggle, was it? it oh, no, he's been there. It was a brick wall financially. I'm very happy with my purchase. Thanks for... Uh, Absolute pleasure. Great to have you on Pancake UK. Day. Well done, Dan. Just happy to be on yourself. Right, let's run before the police come. You got to jump the queue because uh, they recognised us. <laughs> what have you bought? They thought I was like this. Um, I haven't bought anything. He's on a clothes ban. I've, I'm on a clothes ban. That's a bag of um, stones. A bag of stones. What's happening, ladies and gentlemen? It's time to tell you about our main guys, the longest standing sponsors we've got. Our absolute boys, Manscaped.com, an OG sponsor that have a word, supported us from back in the day, and they've got some brand new products. We've been shaving our cocks for years. Time to shave our faces as well. Dan? I've been using the Manscaped that they gave us ages ago for my fucking beard as well. I use it for everything. The Beard Hedger Pro Kit that they've just announced. I think we're the first podcast in the UK to be selling this. It's a massive kit, and this is an amazing piece 
of equipment. Beard trimmer. On top of the beard trimmer, you get the beard oil, you get the beard shampoo, the beard conditioner, the beard balm, this little brush. You could even clean your golf clubs with that. You know what I mean? You got this to clip the strays off. Manscaped.com. Use the promo code WORD20. You get 20% off site-wide, and you get free delivery worldwide. You can get something to shave your face, something to shave your penis, something to shave your wife's pussy. You can shave everything in your life using manscaped.com and 20% off from us. Men, men are difficult to buy for. And this is one of the best presents you will ever give. Isn't it? Yeah. I'd be well happy. Why don't you get the man who's got everything? A beard hedger. Mm. Manscaped.com. Wear 20. 20% 20 off. Do it. Free delivery. Do it. Sort your head out. Shave your face. And your cock. And your wife's asshole. The advent's over, Adam. Well, I own some rather nice new pants, mm. and I use the two term "rather nice" quite loosely. Oh, that was a great that? Dan. You've got to be chuffed with them. Yeah, I couldn't find it. Like static. It's not. Yeah, it's sometimes. Sometimes it just goes you, just that way, you look yeah, out. Yeah, do you yeah. mean? Yeah. How do also, you, I'm on a right? shopping ban at the minute, so. Yeah. Uh, was it? Hang on. Hang on. Were you wearing this before? Yeah. Oh, oh. He's a massive F1 it's, fan. It's an old top, though. I've lost quite a lot of weight since I bought it. The thing mm. is, when you buy these three selection of uh, neon multicolored uh, leopard skin boxer shorts, you think you wear them will, when you go clubbing? <laughs> will my wife want <laughs> to be too much? You know, it's going to. I mean, be tiring, that, that is a risk, Dan. It's a risk when you put those on that you could ignite something you're not those ready green to ones deal look, with. Uh, like snake skin. You know, I love him. <laughs> Better you, you know, then. I love him. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. Rob, if you had to look at Dan and think of what kind of animal he'd be best suited to, what would yeah. you go for? Well, as a pet. As a pet, yeah. As a pet. A cat. No, think outside the box. Okay. A cat outside the box. <laughs> ah, <laughs> I, yeah, I originally yeah. was thinking of a cat in a box. No, think outside, a perfect pet think for him. outside the box. The what? The cat. Can can think you of the cat outside the box. Can you pr pronounce box again for me? Box. box. Think outside the box. What would you go with? Just fucking say snake. Jump, go, 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 go with snake. Ah, yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. You got what you wanted. Yeah. A snake in a box. <laughs> <laughs> Is that right? That's what they call me. There's a snake in my box. I can pawn that. <laughs> Have you got any questions, Phil? We've got some simple pleasures. Yeah. Some simple Sex pleasures. Toy Story. Should we do it? <laughs> it's not doing it again. It's a lovely orange. 12 years of <laughs> really, really, really brings out your self control. Have a word call, isn't it? Can we explain what um, this game is? To should, we, should we cue the jingle? What are we playing? What are we simple, playing? Simple, pleasures. simple pleasures. Oh, simple pleasures. Gladly, my friend. Just just getting people to name those things that just... <clears throat> they're just little simple pleasures in life. Have you got any simple pleasures, Rob? Things that just... You know, they're not a big deal. Yeah. But they're just, you know... We're not talking like winning the lottery. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? We're talking like, you know, like itching your arsehole with a fart. Oh, what a dream. That's the dream. Isn't it? <laughs> Dreams about it. It's the dream. Basically, Rob, we people write in and we say whether they're simple pleasures or whether the people writing in are simpletons. Brilliant. I'm all over okay. this. So this. This sounds great. This this one's from Stephen Kidd. A simple pleasure of mine is grabbing hot clothes out of the dryer and putting them straight on and letting them cool on your body, especially Absolute in the winter. Absolute paedophile. I let the iron and go cool because you don't want to be hot. Who wants to... It does depend if it's the winter. If it's the winter, then it makes more sense. But if it's the summer, then don't do that. Doing that in the summer should have you hung, drawn and quartered. <laughs> Rob? Well, I was just going to say, I mean this with respect, Stephen. You're a fucking animal. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of... I'll also, he's taking the kicks. clothes off the dryer and not ironing it. Yeah. Lizard. It's always creased. It's Depends a fuck. if it's like a pair of, like, footy like, shorts. Put, put a hot really thing on, because it will still be giving off sort of steamy vapour yeah if you put it on hot oh, you've out got of the that dryer. out too early surely <laughs> that's a that's a bad one that means can I say a hot towel off the radiator oh unbelievable when yeah amazing yeah mm. but it doesn't translate to clothes out the dryer surely I don't even want a hot towel after the shower oh, I'm I sorry don't. I don't I like no not hot, hot but when it's lovely and like warm, warm in the winter I like a warm off, towel yeah, yeah. yeah. winter off, maybe off but like not in the summer yeah. I don't want to yeah. be sweaty I hate being sweaty yeah me too I'd rather be anything but sweaty dead not dead. <laughs> the warm towel make you sweat. Yeah. yeah. Oof, don't know. You sweat in the shower, you know, so you put the odds on after. 
Oh. All right, okay. This next one is from Joe Gifford. Uh, when you take a red hot pan off the stove or out of the oven and then put the cold yeah. tap on it and it makes that yes, orgasmic sizzle one. and smoke comes off, it makes that. me feel like an 1800s blacksmith. I love that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's got a point, hasn't he? Yeah. I really enjoy that. Putting it in the... That noise is satisfying. And like turning the pan and stuff and getting it all. Like it. That's a simple pleasure. <laughs> yeah, but he's... What, what's he... He's, He's chasing a dangerous dream there because uh, <laughs> the one day is Le Cruzier is going to crack, isn't it? Yeah. Because he, he's he's put it under too yeah. too extreme a temperature change. Yeah. And then it's going to be all over his face. Yeah. I think if you have just cooked steak, if you've already like put water in the washing up bowl or the the sink, in my head it helps make it cleaner quicker to go while it's piping hot. Get it in there. It does you make get it those bubbles. You're a fool, Dan. Really? Yeah. So? I think I think it I'm does helping. make it clean and quicker. I well, think, but you've got to let it cool down, otherwise the coating on your pan breaks. Oh, I've got no coating left. Then, yeah, mate. no, but he is right. It does make it clean and quicker. I've got a griddle pan. But it's not good for it a long time. Yeah, can smell apples? <laughs> <laughs> he is having a stroke. Yeah, and you've got to make sure a George Foreman grill's properly cooled down before you wipe it down. Otherwise, you're just going to just cause irreparable still damage. Are you still rocking the George Foreman? I've not used it. I left with you for about eight years, but it's still <laughs> on top of the cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> Foremans were a big thing. They were great, weren't they? You don't throw away a George Foreman no, grill. No. You leave no. it there because every man can dream yeah. of that day when he gets a fucking steakhouse and just cooks himself it on the George Formby. Foreman. <laughs> yeah, all the George Foreman. <laughs> when I'm cooking steaks, uh, I've done a cheese toasty on the George Foreman. He's a singer, doesn't he? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, when I'm cooking steak. He's George Foreman. Um, I've done a cheese toasty on a George Foreman. Excellent. Yeah, um, you can do vegetables, all sorts. I remember George telling us on the adverts. Oh, I thought he told you, yeah. A George Isn't it mad that person? all of his kids are called George? Are they? All of them. Even the women? Including his daughter. Georgina. She's George. It's that's mental illness. Yeah. Hell of a right hand on her as well. <laughs> <laughs> Body all of George Foreman's kids, every single one, and he's got fucking lords. They're all wow. called George. Thing is, he's whipped out some facts today and they've been right so far, so... I believe him. Do you want Do you me not... to Google it or should we just... Go, he's go right. To... I don't think he's doing it in a piss takeaway. I think I've heard this before anyway. Probably from Adam. <clears throat> Do you know Alexander Hamilton? He had so many kids that they called two of them Philip because the first one died. You were close. They were so attached to the name. You were Phillip. close. He's got one minute. Eighty-one. He's got twelve children. Oh, that's knockout. Uh, <laughs> and I think eleven of them are called George. He's got seventeen kids by TKO. <laughs> oh, no. oh no, most he of them lost are called one kid George. On points. There's a Georgetta, <laughs> and there's a Frida, but most of them are called George. All the boys are called George. Ten Georges, wow. a Georgetta, and a Frida. And yeah. a part of so Pertrude. they have a they have a George the third. Do they, how do they yeah. do they number yeah. them? George George Foreman the third, George Foreman the sixth. They're the two famous one. One one of them's in prison. Um, <laughs> a George Foreman's like the olden days uh, flyers. Everyone's buzzing about them. Basically, yeah, yeah. They, they were. 20 I'm years ago. I'm still on the fence on an air fryer. I've not, I've not got one. Oh, change your life. Not not twin, really? Jeez, it's big happening. talk. Oh. Big talk. Can you substantiate? It's it's just, I don't know why it works better than an oven, but it just fucking does. They're excellent. You can just do anything in it. You can literally, you can just put something in it and then you wait however long you think it takes. You're always right. And you take it out and you're like, fucking hell, I nailed it. It tastes it's, good as well. Yeah. From frozen hash browns. We had it for breakfast the other day Ooh. in the air fryer. Shit hot. Cut a spud up, right? Yeah. Put it in a bowl. Bit of olive oil. I feel like I'm a master chef now. Bit of olive oil. Few yeah. spices. Just toss it about a bit. Was it in the fucking air fryer? Oh, Fuck off. It. Twenty minutes later, you've got the best chips you've ever had. He's a big claims. I might buy one. I've been. I want to get my new kitchen. Oh my! I might have to pop back to TK Maxx. Oh, <laughs> lordy. T-fan. All day. Is, is there an air fryer cage? It's got to be. <laughs> Jeff Blank. Uh, yeah, 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 I don't know. I don't know how they retail it, but they're probably standard shelving, I think, probably next to <laughs> next to huge <laughs> bottles of shower gel, I'd be, I imagine. I can't believe we didn't get chunks Somewhere out between there and children's shoes. I imagine that's where the air fryers yeah. will be. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. That's how TK Maxx <laughs> order this shit. It's incredible, isn't it? Right, last one. This is from Reese Williams. Throwing something in a bin first time with an audience. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's a classic one, isn't it? Yeah. You do that. You do that a lot. You yeah. call it, but nine times out, <laughs> nine times out of ten, it goes in. I don't, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not putting enough weight in you. Oh, oh yes. 
Get him! Yeah. Yes. Uh, right. Yeah, that's quite a simpleton one, though, so he's still a simpleton. Okay, we're going to move on. We've got, got, that's a simple pleasure. got a couple of Shut bits up. of advice. Oh, you've got yeah, some people advice. Is this people giving us advice? No. No. Okay. Are you good at giving advice, Rob? We're oh, about to find out, aren't we? People think we know what we're talking about. We do. I mean, it's funny, isn't it? Like, there's, there's a lot of opinions about everything at the moment, isn't there? And sometimes I realise I don't give me the give and give a shit about my own opinions sometimes. <laughs> That's yeah. honestly my my whole strategy with yeah. Twitter. I don't even I don't even care about my own opinions enough. Yeah. To to talk to to tell them to other people. We can help these people. Oh, okay. but I love I love digging in on people's lives though. This one is from Charlie. <sighs> Hi lids, I've got a dilemma. Not trying to send an intentional ad for Manscaped in, but my girlfriend has intentionally grown her pubes out. She said she wants to do it as it makes her feel empowered as a woman, which is brilliant. But to me, it feels like I'm trying to win a header with Hernan Crespo when I'm motting her out. <laughs> it's a real turn off. Is How that... do I tell her that I can't do with her pubic jungle? Or do I need to grow up and put up with it? Love the pod, Charlie. If she started growing and I was having been with you for a while and she used to be laminate flooring, you've got legitimate grounds for complaints. For but if you meet a woman who's got a hairy moggy, you can't tell her to wax her. <laughs> Is that a problem? Or, if you're not prepared to make your way through the jungle, you don't deserve to find the treasure. I've been seeing yeah? this for years. My dad said it to me. A girl's got a hairy moggy. That's her right. <laughs> Fucking standards. It's not for me, though. I, it, I don't like it. You've got to accept people as you find them. Do you know what I mean? Whoever you meet... You've but got to accept them as that. That they're highly funny. Well, what if they want to change? Yeah, life, life, is is oh, life is a constant yeah, no, they, flux. they can change, but if they change in a way that is unattractive to you, you can go, oh, by the way, I don't like that. Yeah, and they've got to listen to you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Seen all the Jonah Hill stuff. He's been a naughty boy. What's Jonah Hill been doing? Jonah oh. Hill was uh, quite a, a controlling and used language like boundaries with his ex-girlfriend. He was She was a surfer when he met her. And then she, he starts texting her going, my boundary should be in a relationship is you can't be surfing with men and you can't be posting pictures of you in bathing suits, even if you're surfing. They're my boundaries for a relationship. He's just being a bit of a dickhead. I know, you know somebody mean? who's had an, uh, uh, a contact with Jonah Hill and he said for years he's a dickhead. You know who you are, you're listening. And he said he's an absolute cunt. He's really got into surfing though recently. I've seen pictures of him surfing. In a bikini. I don't think you're going to see many more. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he seems like a bit of a lizard, doesn't he? Like, if if you met someone and you made it quite clear early on in a relationship, you know, oh, I could never be with someone who posts, like, pictures on their Instagram where they're in bikinis and stuff, and they stayed with you knowing that that was your opinion, and then they started posting bikini pictures, you'd be like, excuse me, when I met, yeah, I made it pretty clear. Like, it's the same with, like, any, uh, like, boundary that you set early on. If you meet someone and you go, I don't do drugs and I, I would never be with someone who does, someone can't then start doing cocaine or heroin or crack <laughs> or pot and be like, hey, I can do whatever I want, you're trying to control me because they've set the boundary before it was a thing. But if you meet someone who's a crackhead and you, like, a few months later, like, hey, you've got to stop being cracked to be with me, you're bang out of order. They, that's their thing. I mean, I'm, I'm, hang on, hang on. I'm struggling to... Even with crack. <laughs> yeah. Even with crack. If you've met someone and they're on crack, crystal meth, heroin, they live in a crack den, and you go, hey, <laughs> this is bad for you, and they go, whoa, you're imposing boundaries on my crack. I mean, that's more of an intervention rather than being controlling. Yeah, but you, like, if they're open about it and they're just like, when you meet them, they're like, look, I'm a crackheads. Crack crackheads are pretty open about <laughs> it. It's when they're asking for money I for love crack. A bit of crack. And I'm never going to change. Yeah. Right. You can't I'm, I'm, six I'm struggling in. to weigh up speedballs and rewilding your Auntie Mary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jonah <laughs> Hill is always trying to get crackheads off crack and everyone's like, are you fucking cunt? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to say to this young man, uh, man up, sir, and uh, deal with a bit of... Uh, yeah, a bit of a bit of nature's bounty, a bit of foliage. Yeah, <laughs> I need a ball, pussy me. You asking for one? I'm 49. Uh, Adam, have you dealt with? <laughs> He's never seen one. <laughs> have you dealt with a, a a hairy jungle before? I am, and sometimes I see it, and I'm taken aback, you know. But like in the moment, like one night stands and stuff, you do just crack on. You know what I mean? Because you've got that far. It feels a bit rude to go too early for me, love, on your bike. You yeah. can't be doing that. Go Are on. you completely um, immact? Am I completely immact? Mm. Uh, I oh. I do. I I use my manscaped razor yeah. to take myself down to stubble. Yeah, but it can but do does that so not much. Become a little bit prickly for your uh, 
when you're in flagrante with your lover? You'd have to ask that, uh, Finn's mum. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I have no um, opinion I would foist on to anyone. And live and let live has always been where I've been. I Maybe at my generation, I missed the email regarding pubic topiary. Um, <laughs> and... Is. And uh, isn't that the bowl full of nice smelling flowers? That's potpourri. Oh. <laughs> That's potpourri. Yeah, yeah. Pubic potpourri that you are allowed to be like. Listen, you never had potpourri in your knickers before. Yeah, and now it stinks like lavender I down know there. A factory impressed. Yeah, me too. Dwarfs used to make pubic potpourri. Yeah, it was just potpourri. It, was, it wasn't pubic stuff. Oh, yeah, it's from the That's lock the in. Way. I was pissed, and even I remember that. <laughs> But I, d I do wonder, yeah, I, I think it's a thing, it's an age thing as well, isn't it? Like, it's your generations, at nearly nearly 50 I'll be next year. Then um, I think if I started removing things now, it would be unusual, it would feel unusual. And also tentative, um, you know, uh, board in a hotel room, um, exploratory missions I might have been on with a beard trimmer, never ended well. Yeah. Um, I took a follicle off. I'm not going to lie to you. Ooh. And uh, yeah, right near the seam. You know, the bit where it looks yeah. like God sticks you up. <laughs> the goose. And that's, it's not a place I'd like to go back to. Yeah. If you, um, if genuinely you can't get over this and she's absolutely in the thick of it with this new bush set up, I think if you finish with her, you're going to have to make up a lie because it's not going to look good PR wise when you're like, yeah, I've ended that because she just grew a massive hairy bush. Manscaper while the telly's on. That's assault. No, it's not. Present. Yeah. Present I'm, your shame. Whoops. So oh, might as well tie the up while I'm here now. I was just about to manscape the couch and oh, <laughs> I've done your naked bush. That's what you get for watching EastEnders with your bush out. Look at that. Yeah. Nail Sorry, in the brother. shower, Joe. Take people as you find them. Stop trying to change people. If... But do people, pe you know, people, we all change. We all evolve and adapt. Life is change, isn't it? Life is, life is flux. And it, things it always is. change, you know. We, yeah. we, I didn't used to be able to play the violin. You know, and he still can't, but <laughs> there's a potential there. Yeah. <laughs> As, take it up, yeah. Yeah, if they just included violin in any hole in a golf course, <laughs> he'd get there pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, just get over it, fella. I'm if just... Lower went big bush, we'd have, uh, we'd have a, we'd have to have a discussion about that. Why? I can't. It's, it's preference, isn't it? It's yeah. preference. But it's their body, you know. Yeah, it's but it's also m my opinion. So I'm allowed to be like, I'm not into this. What if she went shut up? Yeah, it's okay. If she said she wasn't into, I don't know what you're rocking. Your cock. What? Are you rocking a lot of hair down there to 3. make 8 up? 3.8 for... inches of white hammer, mate. Hair? <laughs> yeah, white hair now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, know you, I know you can say, oh, you just take as you find, but I genuinely, this, I'm not into it. No, I, I'm with, yeah, because Laura hasn't got a big bush, has she? She never did. Yeah. I think so she starts to grow it. That's on air to I, come to you and go, look, I want to grow me pussy hair out. And you can do and you've got every right to go, I'd rather you didn't. There you go. That's what Laura wanted. <laughs> me talking about a bush to end that bit. <laughs> you're welcome, love. Glad you're a patron. You got to watch it early. <laughs> <laughs> if right. you're looking down, maybe you need a trim as well. Just have a look. What? <laughs> she, she, might be, she might, oh shit, I do need a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You get your bush trapped in the kitchen door as you're trying to leave the fucking kitchen. Yeah. It's probably time for a trim. Yeah, he's on purple. <laughs> oh, this suits that orange. Wow. Oh, wow. Uh, this next one is from Brian. <laughs> I reckon, I reckon, um, I'm going to predict it here. I reckon pubes will make a comeback. Like they are. flares. Yeah, pubes like flares. Oh, oh, my God. No, no, no arses and fucking loads of pubes. <laughs> do, you know what's, do you know what's very oh, trendy God. at the minute, Dan? <laughs> Very trendy amongst the uh, kind of indie people in like London, <laughs> yeah. I'd say, is for ladies to grow their armpit hair out nope. and their leg hair and, and just go with it. Oh, yeah, let's all fuck a hipster gruffalo. <laughs> Brilliant. It's like Robin Hood. That's, oh, that's what we want. Listen to the... Listen, oh, wh who are you going to see on Friday? The Jungle with this fucking alpaca. With the Jungle? <laughs> alpaca, by the way. <laughs> just to clear up the animal. Absolutely, for I come on, guys, do what you want, but I don't want to be making love to the fucking Edinburgh woolen mill. Not into it. <laughs> okay, you let them have that one. Human fleece. 
Right, this next one's from Brian. Yes, lads, massive What fan. we're going to need, though, Dan, sorry. sorry Thank to you. Is it... Fuck off, Brian. You're going to have to stop sitting on the fence on this, Dan. <laughs> no, I've decided to take a leaf out of Adam's book. Fucking <laughs> never mind of Manscaped. We've got to fly him, I want it. So, yes, lads, massive fan of the pod and long-time listener. I need advice on what to do with my son. I'll keep him not anonymous, but feel free to give him a name. And Jake Garrett. So, this is from Jake Garrett. <laughs> this is from Jake Garrett's dad, sorry. <laughs> Basically... <laughs> He's 15 now, but he's turned into a plastic roadman. Listens, <laughs> listens to rap songs about hating the police and regularly refers to police officers Pigs. as the gammon when he's with his mates and acts hard at the football. Yes, bro. Only problem is, I've been a PCSO for 14 years. Oh, <laughs> the least the email. <laughs> 14 years! What's he playing? How do I get him to grow up or am I meant to let you him? You need to get a woman in a real job. <laughs> 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 Call it you're a plastic busy. You daft swat. 14 years and he's still not a real fucking gammon. Do you want fucking stabilizers on his busy car, the little gas? <laughs> on the <laughs> car! <laughs> Oh, on, me. That, that, that young lad is doing exactly what you're meant to do as a teenager, isn't it? Is push back against your your the boundaries that are in front of you. And if your dad's... 14 years of PCSO is a bad film, but... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a stinky way to live your life. <laughs> One up from a traffic warden. Have they got any power? Yeah, they can ring a police officer. <laughs> <laughs> They're on a fucking speed dial. They've got a proper old Nokia with a really long battery life on it. <laughs> yeah. I genuinely God. think the rule is they're allowed to detain you for 15 minutes. Oh, really? Yeah. But literally, you can, the second they start talking to you, you can set a stopwatch. And at 15 minutes, you if a police away. officer so I've just... there, you can take one step away. <laughs> <laughs> oh I've Googled God. it, and they're allowed to arrest you as much as any person is allowed to arrest you. In Citizen's, arrest. Citizen's arrest. That's, arrest. That's, yeah. the, that's all the power they have. So you have. can arrest them? <laughs> you could arrest them? Yeah. You arrest, you know, so it's basically a citizen's <laughs> arrest in high vis. You could commit a crime and just arrest all the PCSOs in the nearest, in the close area and get away. So what, uh, hang on. Well, <laughs> ha, 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 talk me through. Yeah. Like you're arrested, stay there. I'm getting in this car. I'm going off. You better stay arrested. No. <laughs> I'm you, a citizen. You find all the local PCSOs, arrest them all, go and do a crime and then leave. Where are the actual police car? No way. They haven't been called yet. It's a, it's a secret crime. So, hang on. How do you... Talk me through how you arrest a police community support you officers. You walk up to one and go, you're impersonating a PCSO. And he goes, no, I'm not. And I go, that's what he'd say. Bam, arrested. And then do them all. Right. <laughs> you're taking a so lot of hostages. So we're going to need staff, aren't we, for this girl? <laughs> <laughs> They've got no power to arrest... When they go to arrest you, you can arrest them. There's no way. We, we <laughs> haven't got plastic busies listening to this podcast. <laughs> Part-time pig years. scum. I don't think so. He goes pretty years. hard <laughs> onto the police. He's like NWA, but a lot more orange. He's like this fella's son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the part-time pig scum aren't listening to us. So we don't have a problem with Jake Garrett. No, no. no. I think he's he's doing what any teenager in that position would and should be doing. Imagine you it? went to ask you and your dad was a PCSO. It's like oh, head he's... teachers, uh, kids are always notoriously the, the one that's always getting suspended, aren't they? Because it's yeah. too much pressure to deal with yeah. at the school. Like, you can't, like... There was a lad in our school whose dad was a police officer. Yep. And he went on a uh, Michael Barrymore's kid said the funniest things. He did? What? I watched this TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> I watched this TikTok about the other day. AD. What? AD. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Genuinely? Yeah. And he said his dad... Um, what was his... his it does sound like... We make our school like up, you know. Every week there's someone else. Oh, that's true, yeah. Yeah. Michael Ballymore's kids said if yeah, but if they weren't from, um, from your school, they wouldn't say anything. Yeah, kids aren't grasses. <laughs> oh, this what does your dad do? Mind your badly. fucking business. His dad was a busy, yeah. Right. Do you remember what the kids said? Yeah, it's on TikTok. I only watched it like two or three days ago. Yeah. <laughs> I'll show you it when we're done. Right, okay. Did he say one of the funniest things? Yeah, he, he said he said shit. We like, oh shit! Like, yeah, his dad, his dad looked fuming. very uncomfortable. Like. <laughs> yeah, he, he basically accused his dad of like police brutality and corruption. <laughs> oh, yeah, and like cheating on his mum and all yeah. kinds. Like yeah. he lie. What did he say? He lies a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My daddy hates certain type of people. He pulls them over in their cars all the time. My daddy racial profiles. I'd love that episode. Chinese. 
Um, anyway, forty. Your dad's a PCSO. Just go, just leave home anyway. Yeah. Yeah. You so, got another year, and then you bust out of that jail, and then start your own. Yeah. <laughs> right. We've got to have a word to round us out. Oh, look at us. Where it all began. It's time to have a word with Adam and Dan. My daddy hides evidence. I don't know these grounds were there, but I lost it often for a minute. Yeah, you were purple as fuck. Great. Right. Love it. <laughs> it's my favourite. So this one is from James Gibbs. Wag wag lids. Gibbo! Gibbsy. Please have a word with some absolute thunder cunt from my soon-to-be brother-in-law's stag do. We were getting rounds all night, but I was drinking double vodka Red Bulls, which was more money than the other drinks uh, others were drinking. I wake up this morning to a money request off him for £12.30 because apparently I profited from the round system. Ooh. Have a word with him or maybe have a word with me for buying more expensive drinks than everyone else. Nice one, boys. Um, I mean, Ooh. it depends on what everyone else was getting. If you're taking honest. the piss, then yeah. yeah. If you're around all night and your drinks are 11 quid and everyone else is four, then you've got to just get your own stuff. You can't actually do that. Yeah. Like yeah. if it's if it I think there's like a like maybe like a twenty or thirty percent yeah. negligent like if someone's getting there's like a wriggle room in there. Yeah. yeah. Like if your yeah. pint's four quid, but like mine's f- a fiver, it's fine. Then that's just like I just like a slightly different drink to you, and that's what a round is for, so that everyone's paying the same. So they get, but if he's got double vodka red bulls, if everyone else is on pints in somewhere where you'd have a stag do, which is probably a club where there's no like offers on doubles and that. I'm having a word with him. Yeah, it does look bad Ooh. if you're in a round system and everyone's getting pints and you're like, can I have a mojito? But also... Every time, that does make you look like a douchebag. Mm. If they're friends, they probably wouldn't send the money request. But if it's just a stag, it might not be his mate. I'd be like, lad, you want me money? I'm going to ask him your mate. If he messaged me, I'm like, like, it's that 15 quid I go. I actually think they're both pricks, to be honest. Yeah, it's a shit thing like, to do. He shouldn't be like doubling the price of a drink, which it sounds like he was doing. And the other guy shouldn't be turning up, but it, I've added it up to twelve pound thirty. Like, just shut up, lad. Do you know what I mean? I'm not a big fan of the. Round and also, system. like, uh, not, unless you've kept much. the receipts, if you've got that hammered, you know, it's an estimate. Yeah, I mean, you're dealing with numbers, guys. You'd be just maybe just let it go. Yeah, just kind of. Well, if I, if I'm him, I'm paying the bill. All right, no worries. Yeah, yeah, you like, yeah. And learn your lesson. Just don't. Like, if you're going to be drinking double the price drinks all night, you've got to go, just go, I'll get me on. The double know. vodka Red Bull's du- still going. Double vodka Red Bull all night is it's a, it's a, a youth, dangerous it's a game. Youthful, baby, like. I, I ended up in uh, the hospital once because I had uh, heart palpitations. I had a bit of an arrhythmia because I'd spent a night drinking pints of vodka Red Bull. That'll and the it. cheap stuff as well, or actual yeah, brand Red Bull. It was uh, four pounds for a pint of vodka Red Bull, and that had four shots of vodka in. Oh, God. It slows your body down and speeds it up at the same time. On tap, Red Bull is a certain type of nasty, isn't it? Emerge. Emerge yeah. Can you get it on draft Red Bull? No, you can get <laughs> no, it on the, in the cup. Not, not South Yorkshire <laughs> draft. Oh, just sort of clean. Oh, Find yeah. a Red Bull, son. <laughs> Let it settle. It'll get you on, it? Let it settle. <laughs> we do. Someone's driving. Do you want an IPA bomb? <laughs> Vickers tipple into a Red Bull. No, um, I don't even think people were drinking that anymore. Kids. I think it's more it's still a club. Jager bombs are still quite prevalent, but... It's feels in the Jager bomb. now, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 But feels we're drink to, hacky. We're having a word to both of these. You're both in the wrong... It's an interesting flip around though, isn't it? Like what you're saying, Adam, I'm, I'm with you because it's like if someone doesn't drink and that, but they're still having a great time and they're just on water or Coke yeah. or something and everyone's buying boozy drinks, I wouldn't expect them to get a full round of boozy drinks in. Yeah. They just nick out of the rounds, don't they? Just get their yeah. own drinks. Yeah, if there's a big disparity in yeah. the price, you go on your own. I just, I, when, you know, when you go for a meal and someone whips out the bill and then gets the calculator app mm. out on the phone. Oh, that's annoying. It just makes me cringe. Yeah. yeah. Just does it, just like, f- for what What are we getting pernickety classic about? classic actor's Big... last night meal. Oh, God. <laughs> I, just I didn't think, have a starter. Yeah. Yeah. I just think you just average it but out. But it's like, just or like, uh, we go into TK Maxx. We do. Uh, we get some slashing your pants. Dan wax out and gets a pair of money. And we've all got to get him in the same round. Mm. You know what I mean? You're on the pants round. Yeah. He's it's gone splitting. for some 25 quid pants. So how much do you wear? Well, I mean, they retail at 24.99, but the good yeah. people at TK Maxx are selling these in a pack of three for 12 dollars d- You did try to haggle at the till, didn't you, Dan? Yeah, he was having none of it. I got more of a discount as well, because mine were retailing at 29.99, but with the same price. <sighs> so I saved an extra fiver. 
Oh, Rob Rouse, it's been a fucking pleasure talking to you, it's my friend. It's been a dream, lads. It's been a, it's been a dream. And I will touch these bricks because <laughs> it's incredible. That's just that that listen is, is just a brick skin, but it feels <laughs> just like brick. Where are we following you on socials? Uh, at Rob Rouse, a comedian on t- uh, Instagram and at Rob Rouse on Twitter. Lovely. It's been and a pleasure the, having you in the Bustle Factory, lad. I really mean that. Well, uh, any time, boys. It's, it was a treat coming over. I'm, I'm genuinely so proud of you all. <laughs> <laughs> I really am. It's wonderful. Finn is... Uh, go on. We've got a tune. <laughs> We've got a tune for the audio. It's uh, not on the YouTube, no. but it's on the audio. This Probably is well. a... Okay. This is a <laughs> Scottish band called Birdcage Theatre. Sure. And it's their uh, tune called The City Screams Us. And they're going to be at the City Cafe every day at five to midnight at the Edinburgh Festival. Oh, Woo! good knowledge. <laughs> really? Yeah. No. <laughs> you sold it like they were literally doing a midnight show. It does sound like it they does. are the Birdcage Theatre. We are Birdcage Theatre. I'm Emily. Can I get some suggestions? <laughs> <laughs> this is Not a 9/11. neutral mass. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Savile. <laughs> Guys. Spatula. They're a great band, though. I really they like them. They sound it. good. Yeah. They do. Love you guys. Appreciate you. See you soon.